Hey everyone. Hey Danielira, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. Thank you for asking. Uh, we're gonna do a portrait today. I'm sorry. I'm getting like right into it. We're gonna do a portrait today of uh, Tommy Galinsky. Mm -hmm. um, Tommy is a, a friend. I would consider a friend. He's a mm -hmm. super super cool guy. Uh, very good painter. He um, he has a TikTok that we follow because mm -hmm. we don't follow many TikToks. Because we think, don't use. I think we follow TikTok. like you know very few accounts. But Tommy is uh, one of the accounts that we do follow, and it's um, it's a real joy to watch him paint. He's very bold, um, uh, and I don't know. I've always felt uh, pretty connected with the things um, he does with the approach he has. So. Always have have had respect for Tommy. I know he's a um, super hard worker. Uh, to me, he epitomizes the um, you know the group of people that, mm, and it kind of reminds me of when I was um, a little younger. But people that just work really, really hard and um, are hoping to to find like a break, and that break can be you know in the shape of anything. It could be um, getting. Uh, in contact with a gallery that is enamored by your work and wants to put in, you know, a bunch of hours to try to dedicate to you and to building your market. Or maybe it's about um, an institution, a school, or um, independent workshops just opening their doors to you and asking for your aid in, in supplying classes, workshops. Um, yeah, those... those um, those doors co come in, in many, many shapes. And um, when you're young, you're always hoping that, you know, at some point something will happen and, and that the only thing that you can do, the only thing that you can control is just working hard and consistently. And, um, you know, in the art world, you realize that it's not easy. It's never, ever easy. Um, it's not supposed to be easy, but sometimes it's horribly unfair. Like I can deal with it not being easy because that means that we have to work hard. But sometimes I feel that it's awfully unfair. And that one stings a little more because I think, you know, I, I, I don't know how to do this, but I think that the art world, the art world should be more appreciative of, um, you know, of the dedication that many, many people put into um into their practice. So, so I wanted to paint Tommy. Um, I've, I've hold on to this, um, screenshot that I took of his, uh, of a picture that he, uh, posted of a story of, of like a self portrait that he, uh, posted. Um, I've hold on, I've held on to it for, I would, I'm going to say years. So, uh, it's a it's a good moment to uh, paint it. I think there's a very very baroqueish classical look to it. Um, so it's, it's a really grounded Tommy, and um, I think I painted Tommy once before. He had a Miami Heat um, shirt. Yeah, yeah, cap one. backwards, glasses. So that that's a different Tommy. I think that painting was. Um, I forget if it was just yellow, red, and black, and titanium white. Maybe. But, um, yeah, I think so. I don't know which yellow though. I forget. I think it was just. I think it was. It was bismuth yellow, if I'm not mistaken. If you want, I yeah. can check. Yeah, you, if if you want, Danny, you can check. But, um, yeah, I think that's the 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 only moment I've painted Tommy. So I, uh, I'll gladly paint him again. He has a super powerful portrait. Um, really nice gesture. Uh, he totally doesn't mind that we're doing this. I'm sure I didn't ask him, but I'm I'm a hundred percent positive that he doesn't mind. Um, so so this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna push a little bit, but not as much as I push. I feel, and just because I want to do there, there's a as I was saying at the beginning, I think I want to do something not super classical, not not super super academic because that's not something that I have in my wheelhouse that's I wish I had that that um that ability and that kind of discipline but the truth is I don't I I actually don't um but I'm but I can try to be you know within my own rule set and within my own 
manner of understanding things, I can try to be a little more uh, disciplined. So this is one of this is going to be one of those paintings where I'm going to try try to be a little more disciplined. But I already, you know, I'm, I'm watching, I'm looking at it. Um, Tommy's pick, and I already know that I'm going to try to also emphasize some of the uh, some of the geometry that's in the uh, in the portrait, specifically in the contour. I feel that that's super cool. There's there's a flatness to the top that I really really like, and the reason I'm I'm giving this so little space, which by the way, you know, portraits usually people tell you. Like this is a portrait. You know, there's there's got to be a ton of air, you know, surrounding that portrait for it to be good. And sure, I mean, yeah, if if we want to do portraits like they've been done for, I don't know, six centuries. Yes, sure, that's a portrait. But portraits can be this, you know. You can cut off somebody's, <clears throat> sorry. You can cut off the top of the head of somebody, and that's pretty cool. You can you can have the top of the head just barely, you know, right, you know, almost touching that um, that top of the um, top of the substrate or the canvas or whatever. That edge, that imaginary edge. You could do that too. You can make all of these work. This one, this one works for sure because this one's proven. Uh, this one works, I feel, always, too. This is pretty exciting to paint. Um, this one is harder to pull off because there's going to be so much tension here in that little bit, that little bit where the ta this tangent, which is the, um, your, you know, essentially the edge of your substrate is going to be almost conscious of uh, what you're doing. Like, it's almost as if the paper was sentient and was saying, like, hey, why are you so close to me? Like, you know, give me my space, personal space, please. Um, so there's a lot of tension in that little moment, but that's totally fine. I've done, you know, this in, in very many variations, I feel, where it's almost there, where it just barely goes across, you know, so there will be just like a little bit um, out there, a little bit more. And up until this, too. Uh, but all of these are fine, I feel. I don't, I think judging composition solely on this, when we always ju judge composition based on, on these um, efforts, I mean, sure, they're proven and that's our history. But that doesn't mean that, that other things won't work. Uh, it'd be awfully boring if you start painting and you already know the rules. Like the rules have been set for centuries. And it's like, no, 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 you can't do it that way. And it's like, why not? Well, because that's not a way that has been done before. And um, like I've always said this, but if you want me, and this is a me thing, but if you want me to do something in painting, tell me that I'm not supposed to do it. Tell me that it doesn't work and that I'm not supposed to. Because that's going to give me purpose. That's going to give me like, okay, let me see. And maybe, maybe I do a painting and it turns out super ugly. And I have to go back and say, you know what? You were right. You know, yeah, there's, there's reasons. But if I don't experience it, I'm not going to take anything for granted. I'm not going to take it. I'm not, I'm not going to take other, you know, the, the words coming from other people's mouths telling me that doesn't work. And I'm going to immediately just say, that's a rule in, in painting. No, I'm never going to do that. So I might, I much rather just, um, understand if it's a rule that, um, that can hold any weight in my process, or I'll understand it as an obstacle that all it was asking for us, you know, artists was yeah, a little bit of pushing so that we could surpass it and never understand, understand it as, you know, something that can block or, or passage. So, um, so I much rather push this upwards than leave air because I also like that he, this, there's a gesture. There's, there's something about the portrait up here that just feels awfully symmetrical, awfully classical. Um, but then there's this neck that's coming 
from the side. It kind of swoops from the side. This one kind of goes here and then down. And then this open kind of V-neck, deep V-neck. Uh, very sexy, Tommy. I can't pull that off, but uh, works wonders for Tommy. Uh, so that's really, really nice. I like this, all this. I like as much as the uh, portrait up here. So we have to make those two things kind of work together. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much what we're going to do today. And the reason uh, we're doing this is because a lot of people mm, yesterday, well, not a lot of people, I'm sorry. Yesterday, we were asked, um, what, what do you do when you want to paint something? You know, you have um, this, this initiative that is honest to want to paint something. And uh, almost like late in the game, you realize, oh, wow. I'm doing the same thing as X, you know? And X is a wonderful painter. They are amazing. And maybe I wasn't conscious. Maybe it was like something that was um, set in my, you know, deep unconscious, in a deep unconscious level where I had been attracted to this for a very long time, but I just wasn't aware that it was seeping into my work. Um, and now, again, a little bit late in the game, I'm noticing that I'm just pretty much doing what they're doing. What do I do then? And I was I was saying how there are things that are pretty, I think there are things that are pretty obvious. Uh, let me see if I can give you an example. Let me see, Danny, let me look for something here on my Instagram. Like what could be an obvious, let me see what I've liked recently. Okay. I think I think uh, I know who we can use and it works perfectly. So can you give me the username and maybe? Yes, I think it, th there's a hashtag. It's not a username, but you can search for the artist and maybe uh, look for uh, a photo. Uh, so it's uh, I don't know if you know this this um, Japanese sculpture. So uh, it's yeah. Hirotoshi. Well, I've seen his work. Yeah, Hirotoshi Ito. I I had seen his work. I didn't know I. Couldn't re I honestly I didn't remember his name. So but this I, one maybe. Yeah, we exactly. Let's use that one. That one's perfect. So Danny's going to show you an example of things that I think are like absolutely obvious. Like that those are things that you go like, okay, somebody did something that is super cool, and I would look foolish. I would look ridiculous if I try to do something like that. Um, give us a second. Um, Maybe you guys know of, of this artist. He's an amazing sculptor. But, you know, let's... Again. In desktop, I feel? Nope. No? Try downloading... Oh, on... no. Again. Oh, it didn't download? It yeah, can't... try with another one. Yeah. yeah. Any other one. I'll check my drawing as, while you do that. I'll check the drawing that I'm going to not pay attention to as you do that. So there it is. Okay, perfect. So, so this is a perfect example, I feel. This is one of those things that if somebody did this, if somebody else went like, oh my God, that's exactly what I wanted to do, I'm going to take another rock or I'm going to do this in marble, you know, they're doing it with this. I, I wouldn't know. I don't know enough about uh, rocks to know exactly what sort of rock that one is, but I'm not going to do it in that rock. I'm going to do it in something that I can get. So, I, you know, there's this marble that I can get, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put, you know, teeth, zipper, perfect. You know, that would look absurd, right? That would, that would be insane if you want to do that. It's like, hey, what are you doing? It's not that the rocks belong to, you know, Ito. Like, no, no, no. He hasn't claimed that he is the one person that can work with the rocks. It's just that all those variables are so specific. The fact that he puts a zipper and the fact that he then puts those teeth, um, you know, that makes it so, so specific that you would look, again, incredibly foolish if you think that you can take those variables and make them your own because I think those variables already are very conditioning so it's really hard for you 
to find yourself within those variables. That's a very small space. That's a very tight space. So what I think you could do is if you look at all his work, which is something that I think is um, we should be responsible for. We shouldn't, we shouldn't just stop at one image and say, oh my God, I love this. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to emulate this. You should always look at you know, the body of work of an artist and say, okay, what are they actually trying to do beyond rock with zipper and smiles? And if you look, if you dig in a, d a little deeper, you'll realize that this is a sculptor that plays a lot with like expectation, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he will try to make the rock feel, you know, way softer and mm -hmm. way more malleable than it actually is. That is what he's trying to do. So he has some loaves of bread. I don't know if you saw no, those. I'm, oh, I'm going to put one. the... That one's yeah, yeah, yeah. gorgeous. That one is gorgeous. So at the core of his work, it's not really the fact that he's putting teeth on a rock and a zipper. That's not it. That's just, you know, where it... That's almost like, you know, where the river just opens up and, and that's, you know, th that's one of the courses of that river that he found. But... At the core, if you really look deep, you realize that no, he's just playing with that expectation, with the knowledge, that sensible knowledge that you have of a rock. And he's telling you, I'm going to play with the things you think you know, and we're going to try to fool the brain a little bit into, you know, making that rock behave in, in manners in which are, you know, so ambiguous and so different from what we associate, again, sensibly with a rock that you're going to find this fascinating. Mm -hmm. So that's what's at the core. Not really the final product. It's just, you know, again, playing with expectations and with like sensible experiences with, with um, you know, past data that you've, uh, you've accumulated in your brain and, you know, how that usually um, tells your brain how you should look at something. It tells you, okay, we should expect this when we look at something. And, and if we're thrown like this curveball, you know, that's what makes it, that's what's making it super fun. So you always have to go deeper. Like the, the actual, the, the um, resulting image, that little rock with like, you know, a zipper and some teeth, that's at the surface level. But we have to go way, way deep to find what's actually driving, you know, this exercise that culminates here. Because if we get here, you're going to start to see that, you know, this little thing, you know, the thing about um, working with expectations, understanding how our brain uh, sort of reads a material and how that we could do something to change that into something else. That can, if we start from here, we're not going to end here. We're going to take so many, you know, there's so many possibilities branching out from here that that's where we want to start. We want to start here. We never want to start here. That is ridiculous. But I think the mistake that most of us do, and I've fallen prey to loving these things because these are so attractive sometimes. These, these ending kind of images are so, so attractive or objects are so attractive that they, you know, they become a trap. They become like a sensible trap also because all of our senses are just like so infatuated by these objects that that we just fall prey to them so the first responsibility that we have for ourselves and you know uh, for our work is to dig deep never stay here never or stay here just to appreciate it like those rocks are amazing did you did you show the um the uh butter knife also yeah yeah, the plate with the butter knife. Oh, my God. Like, how gorgeous is that? He was able to make the um, the rock feel even, you know, uh, just way more malleable than that, you know, plate originally is, which is like clay, basically. So it's um, it's pretty incredible. It's actually absolutely incredible what he's doing. So this is going to be expected that we love this. We don't have to stay there. We have to go deep. So, um, for example, in today today's example, portraits can be um, a place where you almost feel like the walls are very, very close to you. Because if you want to do a somewhat traditional portrait, if you want to use somewhat traditional lighting, which means that your lighting is going to be from up top, 
and coming down and maybe if it's a cooler light like if it's um um not direct sunlight but if it's um you know overcast day or north light and it's coming from above and it's coming from um either you know directly uh from the top or from the side from a really nice uh, north window northly northly lit window uh chances are you're going to look at something and you're going to be like oh my god that is baroque like what i'm seeing right now is high renaissance and baroque every single portrait that i'll ever see well, not every single portrait, but but I'm 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 exaggerating. But 99% of the portraits that you'll see uh, from High Renaissance and Baroque followed that you know um, lighting those lighting conditions. So what does that mean? Does that mean that if I copy this, that if I want to paint another human being under these lighting conditions, I'm just drawing so much crap in here? I hope this is not confusing, but what does that mean that if i copy this that if i start from here from these lighting conditions and from human being does that mean that i'm always gonna you know kind of end in rembrandt that i'm always gonna have to be compared to rembrandt i did like a little you know semi rembrandt here just to gotta give him like a slight double chin here which is amazing um that cap thing and yeah, that's good. I think that's Rembrandt E. Yeah. Rembrandt adjacent, let's call it. But does that mean that we're always going to fall to this to to, you know, inevitably compare ourselves to this moment of history? Cuz if we do, if we think that Oh no, this is the trap. I'm going to fall into the Rembrandt trap. Oh my god, you're going to we're all going to like die there. That's just like there's no way we're getting out of there because nobody paints better than this. Nobody. I mean, it's like the other day that people were telling me, "Oh, they don't like you because you don't paint like Velázquez." Yeah, that's fine. Like nobody paints like Rembrandt. Nobody. Nobody today. Nobody 100 years ago, nobody 200 years ago, and I'm going to say nobody 100 years from now. Like, this dude is, is like, exceptional. The nature of being exceptional means that only very few people in all of humanity are going to be able to do this that well. And this is going to come, uh, come off as a shock, but I'm not that good. You're not that good, whomever I'm speaking to. Danny's not that good. And that's okay. We can all live a very cool life knowing that we're not as good as this. So how do we do this? How do we start with these variables that are the same? And how do we not end up in this trap? So what I'm going to try to do today, and hopefully by execution, is, um, is show you that I love this. This to me, you know, Rembrandt to me, I'm so sad that I'm pointing at this and I'm speaking about Rembrandt when I'm, all I'm doing is just a tiny little scribble. But um, it, it seems horribly disrespectful to him. But um, but I, I know I'm never going to be Rembrandt. And this is not me being like, oh, come on, you should strive to be the best painter. Oh, yeah, sure. I can strive to be the best painter that I can be. I'll never be that good. Never, ever. I mean, that's fine. That's totally fine. Um, but I can also understand that there is a path for me that can be ignited by all the amazing things that he did, like all the great things that he left for us to learn from, but that it's going to take me somewhere else that is going to take me hopefully, you know, so far away because my life is so far away from his. I didn't throw, I don't throw my urine on the street. That makes me very different from Rembrandt. No, no, no. Like 17th century, you know, uh, um, Holland. That's you threw your urine on the street. That's what you do. That's what they did. So I'm going to say that I'm very different just for that. I use a toilet. So that's a plus for me. That's a big plus for me, if you ask me. So... um so no, so my I expect my life to to be so different that it takes me to a place where 
sure, I'm going to be down here and I'm going to be praising Rembrandt for the rest of my life. And I can do that. I'm fine with that. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to be that person that feels that small compared to this, you know, giant of, you know, in the arts. But, uh, but I'm going to be here. I'm going to be in my little, you know, bit of land and I'm going to be doing my little paintings and I'm going to be super happy because, you know, my life took me here. And that's totally, totally fine. So today we're going to start with those variables using Tommy's pick, which is very, again, which is very, very classical. There's a, there's a super classical feel to it. Um, lighting is coming from above, creating not super deep um, eye sockets, for example, but deep enough. Uh, you can see the underplane of the nose going into the shadow, cast, casting a shadow also into, into the upper lip. Upper lip is in shadow. Lower lip is casting a shadow. Um, then, you know, the bottom, um, bottom part of the, um, uh, mandible is casting a shadow on the neck. Uh, the bottom plane is casting a shadow on the neck. Uh, neck is turning very, very nice. So we're going to try to see if, if we can make this, yes, classical enough so that, and by classical enough, I know the Baroque's not necessarily, you know, classical, you know, Renaissance was far more classical in that sense. But um, classical in, in, in the sense that, that, um, that the values that were um, exalted, you know, during 17th century are very much so values that you could see in, you know, uh, uh, Greece and Rome and that were revived, you know, during the uh, Renaissance. So th there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of respect for those, uh, for those um, for the, for the foundation that was that had already been set you know uh 1800 years 1700 years before uh the difference being that um there was a and especially with dutch painting for example and that's why i'm such a, a an enormous fan of dutch painting but difference being that uh, because they were not Rome, because they were not as religious, which is actually the big difference between the uh, Flemish and the Dutch, um, they were able to also look at human beings. And, and yes, they, they could paint, you know, Christian uh, subject matter, um, but they were doing it in a way that was far more like humanist than the uh, Belgians would. And of course, than the... Um, the Italians would. So there's something far more grounded um, about the uh, the Dutch. And, and that's what I, I'm floored by. Like, I don't think, I really don't, I don't think anyone has painted a human being the way Rembrandt painted human beings. I really don't. And by human beings, I don't mean that, I don't think anyone was able to paint a better portrait. There are amazing portraits. There were amazing portraits before Rembrandt, and there's amazing portraits after Rembrandt. Like it's it's not about portraiture. I think it's about humanity. And I really don't think there was anyone anyone better than him at, at just painting the core of our humanity. I really don't. The, the the only thing is I don't understand where that lies in. I really I can't tell you that for for us to paint humanity, we have to do these, you know, five things. So that's the toughest part. I feel, but that's what I admire the most that the people that he painted felt like people to me. Like when I see people that are represented by Rembrandt, it's almost like the same definition that I have in my brain of human beings. When I see them in a painting, I see fellow human beings. And when I see with other painters, when I see portraits, I see portraits. And I know that that's probably a super vague difference. I know probably that doesn't make any sense. But in in my heart, that's what, you know, that's the biggest difference. So we're going to try to access, to use the same variables, but we're going to dig in deeper and we're going to try to access like that sense of humanity that's underneath there. But again, that sense of humanity in my life has taken, you know, the, the, the definition of that has been shaped by all these like weird roads that I've taken in my life. Um, all of them being roads that I don't have to, again, throw my pee on the street, at least not every day. So, um, 
So we're gonna we're gonna take that that um we're gonna build on those experiences and hope that they lead me to a place where I, I say, Yeah, that's my portrait. That is mine. Not because I wanna claim it my own, not not because I wanna say, take that Rembrandt, I did my painting. No, that's dumb. Don't do that. Don't ever like say take that Rembrandt because that's dumb. But because you know, the effort in trying to see yourself through your painting is a, is a wonderful endeavor. That is, you know, the, the place where you're going to grow the most. So I think this is the most that I've scribbled before a painting. Maybe, yeah. I feel bad also. No. I don't know. I think I put everyone to sleep. So um, um, is it okay? Uh, a sense of humanity in a portrait? Oh, that sounds very nice. Okay. Yeah. So let's uh, let's start with this and, and let's see how that goes. So uh, when you were asking me about uh, Tommy's painting, yes, you painted that the yes. one with the red shirt. Yes, it was week fifty one, so January twenty twenty one. Okay, so year and change. Yeah, but ago. before that, you also painted another one of Tommy. What? Wait. Yep. Twenty twenty. No, don't tell me what. Oh no! Oh the uh, the uh, one hue. It, one value, yeah. One value. No, many hues. One value. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. So sorry, Tommy. So yes. Um. Oof! I almost um didn't remember that one. I feel bad when I don't remember my paintings. No, I mean you did remember. It just took. I you do, a I do, bit. but it's like leaving your kit at the mall, like. <laughs> Yeah, Tommy, where are you? Tommy's in the back seat. And you realize, oh my God, I left Tommy <laughs> at the foot locker. Um, so is it okay if we say hi? Yeah, of course. Uh Liad was saying hi. Hey Liad. Margo dice hola. Hola. Hola Margo, Margo. ¿cómo estás? Uh Kathleen Hernandez was saying hi everyone. Hey Kathleen. Nikola Smijarevich. Oh. Said Jeez, we were Hola. doing so well. I think. Well, I was. Tr I'm trying to remember, and I think I'm not that off. No, no, no. I think, they I think he's very happy with our interpretation. Um, Marcelo Peralta was saying hi, everyone. Hey, Marcelo. Robin was sending some uh hands. Oh. Hi, Robin. How are Ro. you? Hi, Ro. No, Ro, Ro. Ro, my boat. Uh, Catherine was also saying hi. That sounded kind of weird, but what? The row my boat. Mm. It was like an invitation. So it's like a weird invitation. I mean, she could row my boat, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> um, Beliko Dudic mm -hmm. said, "Those are the quote-unquote rules, but when you know them, you should try to push them as far as you want." Yes. Yeah, because some some and pushing doesn't mean the same to everyone. By the way, sometimes you know it's not enough to just say push because a lot of people are going to say, "What do you mean by push?" And a lot of people have to answer the questions like, "Am I not pushing because I'm comfortable here, or is it because I like it here?" And if I'm comfortable here, am I am I just afraid to explore things? So I'm just going to kind of set camp here. And, and say, no, 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 I'm not going to move for the rest of my life because this is something that I think I kind of do well and I might as well just, you know, reap the profits from it. Um, or am I doing it because that next step feels like it's going to take me to a place where I'm going to feel very, very insecure and I don't want to feel that. So, yeah, pushing is something that... Oh, fuck. Blah. I used... Um... I have my black there, and I usually always put my black on top of my um, um, marine. Oh. oh, so I, I, um, I went for it. But and the thing is, black, the ivory black, just takes so long to dry that. Well, maybe it was um, like a uh, coincidence of the universe because yeah, well, uh, the painting you did of Tommy. Yes. Was titled "Using Ivory Black." Yeah, yeah. The painting so, was was already telling me, "Come on, 
come on. No, I think I'm going to use more of my regular path, which is um, titanium white, yellow ochre, cat red, alizarin, uh, raw umber, and ultramarine blue. So I'm going to use my my old faithful. I think, I don't know why, mm -hmm. but uh, again, the white balance, it's, it's kind off. of warm. It's a little bit warmer, but we can deal with that. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad. Okay. Yeah, it, yesterday it was the, the what was uh, killing us was the uh, Over overexposure. Yeah. I mean, we always try to find like balance, but it's uh, it's very tough with painting when photographing or, or um, recording painting for sure. Uh, Darian, Darian mm -hmm. Gallardo dice hola a todos. Darianki, casi. <laughs> eh, Sinocephalus said you block in your painting so quickly and effortle effortlessly I take much longer and make a lot of corrections even if it's going well oh I I mean trust me there's a lot of times if it feels mm -hmm. effortless it's because I am okay with making a lot of mistakes <laughs> but um, and I always tell myself I'll get to it like I'll later get to it. That's totally fine. Like I, I always convince myself that if there's something that really bothers me at this stage, I'll definitely try to um, assess it as quickly as possible. But if there are other things that I'm like, oh, I didn't quite hit it, I'll get to it later. Like I always tell myself, if, if it doesn't bother me that much, like really bother me that much, I always, always tell myself, oh, it's okay. You, you can leave that for later. Mossy was saying, have a nice day. Thank uh, you, Mossy. Thank you, you too. Emilio Sorni dice, holy shit. Whoa. I, I said, sure. Mind your language, please. Ustedes siempre me enseñan artistas buenísimos. Qué buena escultura, Dios. Saludos a todos, por cierto. Ah, es fantástico. Ese escultor es fantástico. Eh, Leslie Cavazos Garduño dice... Leslie Cavazos Garduño... Dice, sorry for all caps, jajaja, ja, ja, se me fue, pero no sé en dónde, que no hay sí. ningún otro mensaje. Calma, Garduño. <ríe> eh, Lapis Exley, mm, so shade. shade, was saying hello everyone. Hey, Shade. Hi, Shade, how are you? Uh, MCLA Films, Film, was okay. saying hi, guys. Hey. Hey, how are you? Uh, Daniel MC. Mm -hmm. Was saying, hola, hola, I missed the monologue. I will rewatch later. Oh, it was heartfelt and confusing, like, you know, most all of my monologues are. So, Idrona Drawing said hello. Hey. Hey. Uh, Cody Winicky. I think they're new. No? Yeah, I've never heard Idrona. So, or maybe welcome. they're not new. Okay. But maybe it's the first time they're uh, Long time, commenting. Long time, first time. Okay, yeah. Um, Cody Winicky. Hey, Cody. Was saying hello. I can't stay long since it's a class day, mm. but it's nice to hear my favorite contemporary painter talking about my favorite historical painter oh, for a bit. Stop it. <laughs> um, Daniel Arthur was saying hey guys. Hi, Daniel. Daniel, boa tarde, boa tarde. No, I, I, I can't do. I can do Portuguese, but Portuguese from uh, Portugal, can't do it. I love that you said, I can do. I can't, I can't. No, no, no. You can do the uh, Portuguese from Brazil. Oh, yeah, of course. You were like super sure about oh, it. Oh, 100%. Stu Tony said, does your brush pressure change throughout your painting practice and how? Very much so. So... I'll give you an example in a little bit. Right now, I'm almost like scrubbing because there's no medium. I shouldn't be using like my it, cheap. These are cheap brushes. Uh, these are um, Tang Rui Giotto. Uh, this is probably a $1.50 brush. So it's quite cheap. Um, but th these are nice because I actually like them because when I can use medium, they, you know, they're very flat and they're kind of sharp, at least for a little bit. They, they lose their shape um, after a while, but um, I like them. I like them. And uh, I shouldn't be using them to scrub. I should be using like a fuller 
older brush to just kind of scrub. But right now I'm I'm just putting paint, just um, hoping to very very slightly um, at least have like a have through the aid of a of a darker kind of shadow mass, let's say have a sense of my composition very, very quickly, at least tonally. So that that's what I'm doing right now. But um, after this, I'm going to probably, and let's see if I execute on, on what I promise. So I'm probably going to use this guy, which is a rosemary flat. So is it a long flat or just a flat? So it's a long flat. They actually have like extra long flats. But this is a long flat that's already really busted up and not because of the brush's fault, but because of my fault, I tend well, to... Well, and you're uh, doing it more and more, so... Yeah. Oh, the, the, no. A brush sh should be able to stand this. This is nothing, because this is just my finger. But when you <laughs> when you scrub a lot, then that, <laughs> that beats up a brush, you know, quite a bit. So uh, I'm going to start with this, and I'm going to be pressing a lot because I want to load all of this with paint. I want to load my lights like, you know, very, very quickly. I'm going to lose my drawing, which is going to be fine. But then after that, because of it, uh, the fact that I'm using raw paper, raw paper is going to let me paint on top of that kind of thick paint, like literally on top of it, almost as if it was indirect painting. Like I'm going to be able to layer, let's say I have a big brushstroke going down on this direction at the beginning. I'm going to be able to actually put another brushstroke going in the opposite direction. And I'm going to be able to see through that second brushstroke the uh, direction of the first brushstroke underneath. So that's something that's super cool about having a raw substrate because it is sucking in so much of that oil at the beginning that it's allowing me to layer my brushstrokes um, that way. So think about it like as if it was acrylic, not really acrylic, but maybe gouache. It's gouache-like in that sense. A lot of people even see my paintings when I do them on paper, and they very correctly, I feel, they 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 think that it has, they have like a, a, a gouache sort of nature to to the painting. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's see, let's see how we do. Uh, Nikola. Smijarevich yeah. said, I was AFK for mm -hmm. a while. What do, did I miss, guys? Do you know what AFK means, Danny? No. Uh, try to guess. Try to guess. Your guesses will be wonderful. Mm. So think about what he's saying. Well, I mean, he was out. I get yeah. what he's trying to say. I don't know is where the letters come from. Okay. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. But I know for, like with the context, what mm -hmm. he's trying to say. I mean, yeah. that I get, that's like super easy. So I'll give you hints. So let's say he was in the computer in front of specifically a computer. Mm. No, I don't know. So away from keyboard. Oh. So you left your keyboard. Oh. So that's the thing you would do in gaming. Because if you leave your keyboard, you can't game. So it's almost like your character is just standing still mm -hmm. and doing nothing. Okay. Um, Kakeiro, this is hello. Rodriguez <laughs> del Cacao. <laughs> Leslie Casas Garduño, dice... Garduño. Garduño. Mm -hmm. Dice, tengo que confesar que mientras se fueron a España, llené sus horas de live con el juicio de Johnny Depp. Ayer terminó, así que estoy de vuelta. <risa> Estaba igual que mi prima Kakeiro. Muy, creo que mucha gente. Nosotros, honestamente, o sea, vamos a hacer cero juicio. No, porque... yo no vi ni, ni uno. Ni uno, yo tampoco. No, no, no. Sí, a, a mí, honestamente, a mí no me gustan esas cosas, pero no voy a juzgar a la gente que ve esas cosas porque, la verdad, hemos llegado hasta ese punto que, que ese... Yo, yo, yo creo que había, bueno, había una carga social eh, evidente en cuanto a lo que estaba pasando, porque tenía que ver con género, tenía que ver con maltrato, o sea, tenía que ver con cosas re densas. Difamación. Sí, tenía que ver con cosas re densas. Entonces yo entiendo cómo mucha gente seguramente estaba pendiente de, de cómo, o sea, algo tan, tan sensible, temas tan sensibles, cómo se iban a tratar en una corte. Y en eso estoy 100% de acuerdo. Pero yo soy reflojo flojo para, para esas cosas. O sea, sí. porque al final me doy cuenta... Uf, o sea, yo, yo veo a esas personas y yo digo, aquí perdió todo el mundo. 
o sea, todo el mundo, las personas que están viendo, eh, los, la, las personas que tienen que, que ser abogados para una parte, para la otra parte, eh, pierden ellos dos como seres humanos teniendo que abrirle las puertas a la relación de ellos, súper, súper pues sí, problemática. Pues como revisitar super momentos súper difíciles. Sí, esa, esa, yo digo que ese tipo de cosas, wow. Pero, 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 hay que decir que, pues, obviamente, no, yo son cosas que hay que hacer cuando, pues, ocurre algo como de esa magnitud. Sí, sí, por eso es que, o sea... Lo difícil es que como le pasó a una persona famosa. Pues, muy famosa, Exacto, o sea, está... Y además muy famosa, en el ojo público súper querida por sí. millones de personas en el planeta. Después súper odiada. Sí, que había y sido después... mega cancelada. Y, y después aquí en el ciclo de redención que normalmente tienen eh, los famosos. Pero bueno, Pero, eh... lo chévere es tener a Leslie de vuelta. De todo esto... Y a Cacaíto. Bueno, Cacaito ca también, Cacaito hacía multitasking. Cacaero nos, mi nos miraba y en el otro canal, en el, otro, en el iPad sí. tenía, en nos miraba en el computador y en el iPad tenía el juicio. O escribía hola y, chao, y se sí. salía, sí. Bueno, se confundía, hola Johnny, ¡ay no! <risa> ¡Qué pena! Um, no, pero yo sí digo que yo he visto varios eh, ¿Juicios? juicios, sobre todo como yo... Eh, escucho muchas cosas de true crime. Mm, sí, a ti te gusta. Hay muchos por otro juicios. Lado, sí. sí, hay muchos juicios. Que eh, si a veces estoy tratando de entender un poquito sobre la historia, el juicio está en línea. Entonces, escucho el juicio también para tratar de entender cosas. Pero yo sé que hay gente que, como yo, o sea, eso se lo puede ver y hay gente como tú que no. O sea, tú no. No te... ¿Sabes de pronto porque yo no? Es que a mí me tocó, literal me tocó, uh -huh. eh, el juicio de OJ. En esa... Ah. Yo estaba ahí en Estados Unidos y era... O sea, eso fue tan extraño. O sea, tan, mm. tan, tan Pues extraño. además, hablando de juicios mediáticos, pues... Sí, y además era un juicio mediático... O sea, bueno, no, no, quiero, no quiero escalar las cosas. No, 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 pero era un juicio de un asesinato. Yo sí, entiendo lo que estás o sea, tratando de decir. Sí, era un doble homicidio. Y uno decía, no, es, o sea, esto es difamación, esto es usted, me dañó mi nombre. Que igual quiero, también es un delito. Todo, todo, todo. Y también quiero está 15 muy mal. millones de dólares. Y no, usted me dañó mi nombre, quiero 10. O sea, es, al final, sí, yo sé que había otras cosas, pero pues al final era una cosa eh, que, que seguramente ellos entendían que tenía que ser mediática. Pero es que este, este juicio que fue, o sea, seguramente ha sido el juicio más famoso de todos. Sí. Eh, uy, era una cosa muy densa, muy densa. Sí. Muy, muy fuerte. Pues es que además creo que es muy difícil en muchos de los casos que yo he visto cuando se vuelven mediáticos. Es muy difícil porque también eso, o sea, que todo el mundo está interesado, daña un montón el juicio. Claro. Daña un montón la investigación porque hace que entonces la gente, como la gente quiere, es como un espectáculo. Sí. Y los medios quieren volverle un espectáculo. Pues llevan las historias por donde no son o a veces hay, pues porque lo he visto en algunos casos, hay sospechosos que ya la policía dice no, ya no. O hay personas que son eh, person of interest solamente y en los medios dicen es un... Es un sospechoso, es un sospechoso, entonces son una cantidad de cosas como que terminan es haciéndole daño al, al juicio. Sí, los juicios que yo he visto son más juicios que en su momento no fueron mediáticos eh, y que de pronto hace, se hace una investigación sobre el caso y quedó grabado, mm. entonces tiene uno acceso a eso, pero... Sí. Eh, Sergi Art. Dice, hola, justo uh -huh. vengo del estudio, tuve una sesión un poco decepcionante. Llevo dos días intentando encajar bien la cara de Jack Nicholson uh -huh. y no hay manera. <risa> ¿Y encajarla en dónde, Sergi? Perdón. ¿La de por la puerta después de un hachazo? Sí, la está encajando en la puerta. Sí. Eh... Y 
Invictus Art was saying hello everyone. Hey. Hey, how Invictus. are you? Uh oh, I'm sorry I missed what MA was saying. Mm -hmm. Was saying hi. So hi MA. And Ryan Sullivan was saying hello, love watching one of my favorite painters. Thank you for the entertainment. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. Glad uh, you find it um entertaining. entertaining. Entertaining? That's I always say entertaining. Enter, entertaining. Yeah, I, no, I go enter and then to. Yeah, yours sounds more uh, professional. No. I go no. entertaining. No, no, no. Entertaining. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> um, Ty said, do you always start with the background? If so, why? Um... When when there's a somewhat classical approach, when when I'm attempting to approach the painting somewhat classically, and that's better said. Um, yeah, I think so because as soon as I I put you know this, I want to be able to have um, a way of comparing it to my darker darks, which are going to be this shadow mass that I very very clumsily uh, scrubbed. Uh, but also you know the the value and the tones that are going to be surrounding you know my portrait so yeah i think that that's something that i do kind of naturally leslie cavazos garduño dice, cavazos garduño dice aprendí mucho del sistema de leyes y cómo funciona mm -hmm. loved every meaning más que nada porque fue algo fue por algo no tan grave sergi arts Dice, con encajar me refiero a las proporciones. No acabo de entender bien las medidas. Es de un frame de cuando está loco por el laberinto final de la peli. Mm. Sí, pero si Sergi dice encajar la cara de Jack Nicholson, mm. yo creo que uno tiene yo la pensé cabeza. pensé que tenía el roto de la puerta. Sí, la puerta y, y encajar. Sí. Sí. Eh, ma, pues ah. le, le puedo decir a um, Sergi, o sea, si estamos peleándole tanto, tanto, pues retícula. O sea, si de verdad estamos como totalmente perdidos. Pues Photoshop. O antes de retícula también se puede medir. Sí, sí, pero, no, pero yo pensaría que cuando uno está muy, muy perdido es porque uno está tratando de medir todo el tiempo y, y, y uno empieza como a desconfiar incluso en las medidas que uno hace, aunque medir es una cosa objetiva. Sí, sí, la sí. Verdad. Porque uno a veces lo hace en su dibujo y uno cree que está midiendo, pero cuando uno está juicioso midiendo... Sí. Se da cuenta que esas medidas como al ojo, pues, le estaban fallando y por eso es que no le estaba saliendo. Sí. Eh, entonces, sí. Yo diría, mmm, si quieres ser súper, súper juicioso, seguir como lo que está diciendo Dani, de decir, no, vamos a medir todo. O sea, ¿dónde está el tope de la cabeza con respecto a esta otra cosa? ¿Dónde sí, está? Cinco centímetros. Sí, ¿dónde diez está el mentón con respecto a esta otra cosa? ¿Dónde está? Con un hacer... ángulo de tanto. O y sea... hacer cotas, cotas a lo, a lo eh, Antonio López y uh -huh. a lo Uglo. Uh -huh. O sea, esta oreja, las cotas lo que quieren decir es que esta oreja, por ejemplo, el pico de esa oreja, yo, tra yo trazo una, una perpendicular uh -huh. y miro. ¿Dónde está con respecto al hombro? O si de pronto se intersecta con respecto a, a la camisa en V acá abajo. Uh -huh. Pero ¿dónde da con respecto a otras formas? Hago, uh -huh. hago lo mismo con eh, la, la comisura, las comisuras de la boca. Hago uh -huh. lo mismo con eh, las esquinas de la nariz, con los ojos, con eh, los pómulos, con todo. Empiezo a hacer así y así. Todo, todo, todo el tiempo. Si eso le suena insoportable, eh, Sergi que pues no tiene por qué ser súper atractivo para todo el mundo. Yo soy muy consciente de eso. A mí tampoco es que me encante hacer ese tipo de cosas. Pues, Sergi, como esa manera de estudio, pues incluso tómelo como algo muy mmm, casi que académico, como una experiencia que le estáis enseñando mmm, de pronto dónde hay, de dónde surge esa desconfianza que uno tiene con el propio dibujo. Uh -huh. Si uno hace la retícula en Photoshop, y después hace una reticulita, ya no importa en qué, o sea, si uno va a volver a trabajar encima de eso, pues no importa con qué la hace, la puede hacer con pintura diluida, la puede hacer con un, col un lápiz de color, con un pastel, con una tiza, como para que se vea la, la retícula encima de la pintura, 
mmm, va a empezar a darse cuenta, uy, yo por qué pensé que la figura era tan grande para este espacio, o yo por qué pensé que la figura era tan pequeña, o por qué yo hice la figura tan arriba cuando realmente es tan abajo, ese tipo de cosas. Y esas cosas también son instructivas, o sea, eso, eso uno, uno puede aprender desde ahí 100%. Pero no, no se trata de solo ponerlas y después como que arreglar todo, uh -huh. entre comillas. No, 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 se trata, más allá de arreglar algo, se trata de encontrar por qué uno estaba pensando que la proporción era tan distinta a la que, digamos, si uno fuera a traducir uno a uno, a la que realmente estaba ahí. Eh, ahorita que dijiste Antonio López, sí. viendo tu pintura, no sé por qué, pensé en la pintura de la cena. Ah, donde la mejor. tiene, sí, ¿Es donde mi tiene, sí, es espectacular. Mm. O sea, en el retrato de la hija. Sí. No sé por qué me recordó mucho sí, y a mí el, el retrato la... que estás haciendo. Y a mí el de la esposa me enloquece ese retrato. Sí. Para mí es de las cosas más chéveres que hay en el toda la pintura. Sí, 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 es muy buena. O sea, ese solo retrato yo creo que hizo que yo pintara, no sé, 40 pinturas. ¿Sí? Es claro. Claro, porque eso era, yo tenía siempre en mente esa, esa cabeza pintada en dos posiciones. Yo la tuve siempre en sí. mente cuando pintaba como la repetición de las formas sí, en, sí, mis, claro, en claro. mis pinturas. Pero es además muy chévere porque si se siente en dos posiciones, pero a la vez se siente como en una, sí, pero como perfecta. deformada, sí, como sí es increíble. Oh. Um, Invictus Art was saying, I listened to your advice and I painted a pair of shoes. Oh, oh. do you want to send us, uh, if you want, the painting so we can check it out? You could send us to our to my Instagram. PO box. <laughs> Um, as a DM so we can check it out right now Marcelo Peralta said the crazy thing about these court cases is that they expose how big a mess we make between the private and public life of celebrities also the real life at, and the characters they portray um, Robs was saying hello madame from India Amazing. Ooh, Th that's thank very, you. It's But very I'm, nice, very formal. I'm not the one painting. So No, but they, they wanted to say hi to you. So I'm uh here to uh talk with you guys and Nicolas is painting. I made it, uh Gotherin said hello Danny and Nico. What's your take on the boom of classic academic ateliers? Is it a good education? Um, well, it's a boom that's been going on for 20 years, I feel. So it's it's here to stay, I would say. Um, it's not going to be ubiquitous. It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to take over the art schools or anything like that. But it's certainly something that has a place because there's enough people that want that sort of education. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very solid classical education. Hmm... I think there's a risk to it also because I've noticed how it also perpetuates the same knowledge, um, perpetuates the passing of the same knowledge through generations of painters, let's say, mm -hmm. um, or not say generations because we haven't been doing this for so long, but classes of painters um, that graduate. So you, what I mean by that is that you usually get people that studied over there become the teachers of the newer classes that are going to graduate in the future. So I don't know how I feel. I mean, that kind of, that can kind of happen anywhere. Like, you know, if I graduated from SVA and I had hopes of teaching at SVA, that would be fine. But because SVA is so open that you could teach it just about anything there. Um, but when you talk about teaching in, in, an, in a classical atelier, That means that you have to, you know, again, perpetuate the, the same values that you were taught. Mm -hmm. And I, I think therein lies like the biggest issue that I have with it. That, but, I, but I think they're, they're growing to be more savvy about this problem with the passing of the years. And they realize that they want to push individuality. Because what you 
can sometimes see in those um, classical ateliers. It's like homogeneous. Yeah, How it's the homogenizing exactly. of, of the education, which in turns, you know, which in turn makes almost every single people attending feel like the exact same artist. And we can't lose, we can't lose our humanity or individuality. By humanity, I mean every single experience that has brought us to that point in life. You know, it, it can't be that I am Colombian and I'm going to paint the same way as somebody from India that happened to be at that atelier at the same time. Like, could you imagine that? That sounds ridiculous, right? That me, you know, South American, um, Southern Hemisphere uh, will paint, uh, you know, the same, essentially the same, fundamentally the same as somebody, uh, you know, from across the Atlantic. Um, and, and, you know, the Indian Ocean. So it, it would be absurd. It would be really absurd. But that happens. That happens. Yeah, a lot of people that go there, regardless of gender, regardless of where they're coming from, they kind of end up going towards the same place, so much so that it's very hard, very, very hard many times to, to identify their paintings. Like if you see a lot of paintings together, you go, well you might as well be showing me a single painter because I can't tell the difference and I don't want to be mean about it, but I just can't. So I find it uh, amazing for people that are um, searching for that um, discipline. Mm -hmm. That is fantastic. You know, if they want to have, in terms, in terms of a classical definition of drawing, if they want to have, the yearning to have that um, fortitude in drawing, um, then great. But I think that also it's important to say that both Danny and myself believe that, you know, fortitude in drawing or fortitude in painting does not mean that a single thing. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully by going through that process, you don't become um, convinced that there is one great way of painting. Because I don't know, I, I, I do think that, for example, what made... Uh, let's say Klimt special, Klimt had a very, very traditional, very classical training. And eventually he became the Klimt that we know. What made him special was the fact that we can say he eventually became the artist that we know, which is, you know, he, he was, he strayed very far from what he, what, what he, from what was, oof, from, from what they mold? taught him. Yeah. yeah I, from the mold. I don't even th know what I was going to try to say. Create. Yeah. Uh, I think I. You had a Danny moment. I think two of my brain cells died. I think we just experienced two of my brain cells dying. No, but you get what I, what I say when From sometimes what he was when, taught. Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, Jesus I was gonna. Christ. I'm sorry. I was gonna say that. No, you came to my. Yeah, you came to my rescue. Thank you. There. No, no, no. And if uh, we're speaking in English, it's like double effort to your brain. So sometimes you just. Oh, I mean, no, your no, brain, my brain is shuts off. down. Yeah. yeah, my it's too much. Too yeah, it much. happens to me too. Yeah, the problem is that sometimes if I'm in the middle of a sentence and yeah. I lose a word, yeah, I don't know how to turn on again. <laughs> my English brain. I actually, brain, I was shutting so down. I'm like, <laughs> I yeah. became like Mark yeah, Zuck Zuckerberg for a little bit. Yeah, if you, you were, throw water. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. <laughs> I became Mark Zuckerberg if you throw water at him yeah, for yeah. like a <laughs> tiny second there. Um, no, anyways, but, but but I got my point. But, but I thank got you, what thank you, you, you were for doing. coming to uh, my rescue because that was that was terrible. But my point <laughs> in all of this was that Klimt did that, and eventually he was the teacher to Chile and, and to many other people. But you know, um, to Chile, and and so if you take the uh, the path that uh, Klimt had, you know, and how it just started deviating from from that um, academic upbringing. And you realize that that then he was able to um, to pass on his experiences and his knowledge to somebody like Chile, who I think is an incredible artist, an incredible painter, incredible draftsperson. Um, then you realize, okay, there's there is you know this vastness that opens up when you step away from this. Like the, your only definition of good drawing can't be can't be the one promoted by by this um this sort of schooling it is far far broader so i do think that places that, that you know these places that tended to be a little more dogmatic 
Um, uh, dare I say, some of them a bit cult-like, because you know they would give you a, a robe with a pointed hood, you know, at the beginning, um, and uh, you know that kind of it felt weird. It really mm. felt weird. I, I I experienced that with many many people that were part of these um, of some of these places where they were very very you know quickly uh, dismissive of. Um, of possibilities that would come from somewhere different, from, you know, different from the philosophy that they were being taught. And I just think that that's not beneficial to anyone, to anyone. No, nobody benefits from that. Painting yeah. doesn't benefit from that. Um, the socializing of painting, the way painting can evolve with us, mm -hmm. you know, evolve. It doesn't have to, we don't have to get into a conversation about making it better or worse, but just moving to, yeah. towards somewhere. Um, even like people that were pre-Raphaelites, for example, pre-Raphaelites were trying to, you know, build a whole philosophy around the pa the painting, literally the painting of, of, uh, Raphael. So, uh, think about that. They were trying to say, Hey, Raphael is the best painter ever. Uh, one of the most sensible artists ever. Um, let's try to build upon that. And none of them, you know, if you think of, um, I don't know, Mie or uh, Waterhouse, uh, they don't paint like him. They don't. You know, you're always going to paint differently. So it's kind of weird to expect that we're going to be able to echo, um, you know, 120 years later, 130 years later, we're going to echo the best of academic painting mm -hmm. in a world that doesn't quite, um, um, it doesn't, it can't, nourish this the you know the same values that that um that were really taken care of um you know a, a century and a half ago it just I, can't today's world can't do that i think it's even uh it resonates with what you were talking about with the sculpture at the beginning mm -hmm. that people see the final result and yeah. they try to copy that but they don't acknowledge the time they're living, the time the person who did the painting was living on and how different they are yeah. and how different experiences we have nowadays. So, yeah, because I do think that um, every knowledge that you can get, it's always good for you. But it's good for you in terms of painting when you can make it part of your life. Yeah. If you don't isolate your painting from your life because then you're going to have like something super methodical that you do but that speaks nothing about you yeah but about the painting you learn so yeah yeah i think that's a i mean what what usually they try to push is this idea that you first have to know how to paint and how to draw to then become your own painter and i totally get that and i know how kind of almost easy that idea is to sell to people it's like hey you can't break anything until you know how to do it mm -hmm. you first have to know you first had to know the rules you know the fundamental rules to painting but um like we were saying with ito's sculpture mm -hmm. um you don't have to like i have no idea if he's ever sculpted a bust before if he ever took a piece of rock and tried to do like a very you know greek uh based um, work before and I don't care like yeah. he understands how to sculpt or if he did he did it alongside trying to understand what he wanted from yeah. his art and that's why we can see the work that nowadays we appreciate that much exactly so he he understands what it means to carve a rock and to make the rock feel like something else which can be something very classical that that's a hundred percent something super super classical uh, but he made it into something entirely different, entirely different. So, so yeah, I, I just think for the, in the hopes of trying to push painting towards somewhere that we haven't really experienced. And it doesn't mean that we, that painting becomes this just weird thing that nobody understands. No, painting can just be, can always be just paint, like pigments and, you know, substrate and brushes it can be that, but it can feel different. And I do feel that, that um, 
it is our responsibility. I do believe that it is our responsibility to ourselves and to painting if we respect and, and love painting this much to hope that that we can do something, something, you know, first for ourselves to understand ourselves as painters, but also to say painting has given me so much that I'm going to try to see if by, you know, being honest and responsible to to my own way of of um of interpreting through paint i can actually push something that i love about painting somewhere somewhere and just keep it moving keep it alive i think the moment that painting wants to be you know it's right here and wants to go back here it it'll just you know anchor itself there and it just becomes stagnant if it's not moving and questioning and bothering and you know doing all these these um these things that just it should be the, in the nature of of wanting to keep painting uh, moving forward then it just dies it just kind of sets and settles in the bottom and it, and then it's so hard to like um pick that anchor from the bottom and and help it you know move again i i just really do feel that it is up to us like this is entirely entirely our own responsibility mm -hmm. and um and I think it's it's fine if you go through to one of these places looking for that, you know, that because many times people want something super binary in their lives. They are confused by options and they're confused by voices and they're confused by by tendencies and they just want to go to a simpler life where things are right or wrong and they just want people to tell them this is wrong and here are the reasons and this is how you make it better. And and a lot of times I can also understand that people are like, I just, it's too much. I just want something simpler, something simpler to understand. I'm not saying that that sort of painting is easy. I'm just saying that the way to evaluate that painting is far simpler than evaluating, you know, far more subjective art that comes from um, unique experiences in, in each that stem from each individual's life. Um, Rajida. Rajida? Yeah. Ooh, Ooh. I kicked the uh, camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Rajida got me uh, excited. Uh, Rajida was saying, hey, Daniel Nicolas, this yeah. is such a great conversation. How do you begin to innovate in art and painting then? I don't know if it's about, in, like, like, that's the thing. I don't know if it's innovation. Because if it's about innovation, then... I also think that that's very crippling because you're always going to be like, oh, what do I do that's new? What do I do that nobody has ever done before? It's like, has anyone painted like with, if I stick my my brush, you know, in the uh, crease of my knee and in, 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 on my thigh <laughs> and paint with, you know, my thigh, um, is, is anyone done that before? Or that's me? Can I claim that as my own? Is that going to be like innovative enough? Um, and I, do feel that that's, I don't know, I, I, I think that when the thirst is to try to make something just new for the sake of being new, um, or at least this very, you know, simple definition, this overly simplified definition of, of newness, um, I think that doesn't lead us anywhere either. I don't think it's about, um, I don't think it's quite about that. But I what I do believe is that, um, you know, if I think about Danny, it's like, what I feel about Danny is something that nobody in this world has ever felt before or that will ever feel since, right? Because our relationship, it's just two people meeting in this moment in time yeah, and that happens right now. Exactly. It's right specific now. to every single thing your life and my life exactly so have passed through. right so if you think about it there's two different paths and even like two paths like i was doing stuff when danny was like stardust i was living <laughs> and learning and doing a bunch of stuff when danny didn't exist yeah which is awesome which is super super awesome yeah. so our lines are not even parallel our, our lines like started you know one started before the other and I did a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stupid stuff. And then we kind of, it's, it's almost like as if the universe, I always try to see it this way, like as if the universe was telling us, you're not supposed, like 
if you were parallel lines, you would have never touched. We wouldn't touched. be together. Yeah. Like if you wanted to leave to live parallel lives, like if you wanted Danny to be your contemporary, you would have never met. You would have just been two parallel lines, like running across through time. And I think that because I started younger, and、um, because I started doing things when when I was younger, and and then Danny, you know. Um, existed in this universe.、Uh, that was when life determined that okay, you guys are going to eventually meet, and you're going to do all these things in your life that are going to lead you to that tiny little moment, that tiny little place where you're going to meet, and then you know, and then you can start you know sharing this life together. And I think that's fascinating.、Mm -hmm. I, I think that's absolutely fascinating because that is something that nobody could ever paint. You know the way my experiences kind of you know tangled and untangled, so I could meet Danny, and the way Danny's experiences just took her to the, to that place where we could both, you know, share that experience. And also、together. tangled and untangled. Tangled and tangled. Yeah, I I don't want to make any judgments from your. No, that, no, no. That's no. why I'm avoiding. Using, no, no, no. That's why I'm adding so, <laughs> to what you're saying. Yeah, I'm I'm using entanglement as as my own experiences because I I know my own, but I just don't. Wanna... I mean, we may have have. Different、uh, tangles, different knots that、okay. we tied, but, yeah. but were knots that, nonetheless. Exactly, and were the knots that we needed for us to be a couple. Exactly, so to get to know each other in the perfect moment for each other. Yeah. So, so essentially, what I what I'm trying to say is that nobody has ever lived the things that I lived that took me to that place. And nobody has ever lived the things that Danny lived that took her to that same place. And when when you realize that we can paint those things, whatever that means.、Mm -hmm. In my case, it's very you know I'm a very、um, I think I'm a very small painter in, in in every sense of the word. Like, and it's not just about、um, dimensions, and it's not just about、um, my outlook on life. It's about I don't know. I find peace in the smallness of of my life and the life that that I share with Danny. It doesn't mean that we don't have big dreams. I I think you can you can have like a small life, but still be thirsty for life and、mm -hmm. still want from life and still be and excited. Still, yeah, and still、life. have a a very like worth living life. Yes, very even、much. if it's not a huge life, even if it. If your impact, it's not like huge. If you're not gonna be remembered for、uh, by, I'm sorry,、uh, millions of people. Yeah, you can still live an amazing life. Yeah. So, I I think that while my my painting, um, maybe revolves around that small world, and other people have like bigger pretensions about their painting or bigger ambitions. Let's not use pretensions. Bigger、mm -hmm. ambitions. You know of of things that they want to communicate, of lives that they want to change with you know through their painting.、Um, I think that's that's fine, and and but that's essentially what makes us different, and it is in it is in the acknowledgement of of those very very things that make us so so particular in this universe that we can say, I'm going to tell a story through my work that nobody else can tell,、mm -hmm. nobody else can tell. And it's not because I'm a great storyteller. No, it's because I'm going to share with you the only story that I can share with you, which is my own. Yeah. But、and、for that to happen, you have to live. You have to be okay with living your own life. You have、mm -hmm. to be super okay with that. Yeah, and I think that it also、uh, goes again to the thing we always say about how we see our art, and it's honesty. Because you have to be honest to what you're living, and you have to be honest. So let your painting or your art permeate from that life is being honest with your painting, because you're talking about what you want to talk. It doesn't matter if it's a,、uh, I don't know, a cup of tea. If you want to Ooh, and you desire great, to great paint subject matter, a cup of tea for all of your life, and if it makes sense in your life, then that's the work you're supposed to be doing. But if maybe you want to do bigger paintings, and as you were saying, bigger in every sense, like speak about a wider 
world, a wider universe, not only the, the universe you inhabit. And if that's something you really want to do, then you're being honest again with your painting. So that means different things to different people. And I think that the thing that you should do is try to learn to, like how to listen to that thing that you really want to like to do or to paint. Because I know that it sounds hard, but I think that at the end, you always know what you want to paint, what you want to do. So, Yeah, or at least you have clues as to the direction that you want to go for. Yeah, and I think that you know because sometimes you know what you don't want to do. And with that, I think that you start like narrowing down what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So mm, I was struggling a bit with to do. No, no, Thing no. To do a lot, I would like. No, to it doesn't. It, it, it didn't. Uh, I didn't pick that up. Okay. At all. So. Um. So. So. Jaime Trindade dice hola. Mm. Hola Jaime. Eh, gracias hola, por Jaime. acompañarnos. Sergi Arts dice sí. Creo que voy a tirar de retícula porque si no voy a empezar a perder la cabeza como Jack. Jajaja. <laughs> eh, Olga Maria Benninghoff. Oh, who is that? Uh, so your mom was saying, oh, amazing. Mother. Oh, thank you, Olguita. Uh, Elena Faria said, dice, bravo maestro. Um, Muchas gracias, Elena, muy amable. Me siento re incómodo si me dicen maestro, si le soy sincero, pero muchas gracias. <laughs> eh, bueno, veo que hay algunos comentarios sobre lo que estábamos hablando. Sí. Pero para que no se me pasen los comentarios anteriores, voy a leerlos y ahorita pues vuelvo a ellos. ¿Listo? Tú, tú nos dices. Tú eh, nos Luca ¿Quién Guadaño. Es el timón del barco. Luca Guadaño dice. Capitana. <ríe> Luca Guadaño dice. Hola Dani, hola Nico. Últimamente Luca. estoy tratando de no perderme los vivos que hacen, ya que son una buena compañía para pintar y dibujar. Ayer hice mi segunda pintura con óleos y no es que no me tenía fe, pero quedó mucho mejor de lo que esperaba. ¡Uy, qué chévere! Tus videos me ayudaron muchísimo. Si no la quiere compartir, felices ay, nosotros sí, de verla. A mi Instagram, eh, ay, estoy pendiente de verla de Invictus Art también. Eh, Pablo Rojas nos dice, hola Nicolás y Dani. Entré Pablo. para contarles que sí. ayer estuve en cine y pasaron el trailer de Everything Everywhere All at Once, así sí. que probablemente si la estrenen en Colombia por si no por si no sabían, Pablo, yo ya, ya la vi, ya no la en cine, Nos, él dice. Igual Pablo. Sí, y manda una bandera de un pirata. Y Qué uf, cas. Dice y uf. Qué rara peli, ¿eh? buenísima, Ra, pero eh, cero, yo no sabía nada. Set no tenía ninguna expectativa. Uh -huh. Y no la vimos también, sí, no la vimos, dejemos así. Y Uf, sí, sí, qué curioso, yo no, no me esperaba esa peli. Y también estuvimos en cine, eh, ¿hace cuánto? Dos, ¿Dos días? días. Hace dos días, y eh, también vimos el trailer. Ah, sí, y sí. Y estábamos comentando que no entiendo por qué la van a traer hasta tan tarde. Pasa normalmente como esta es una... Ese, ese estudio es muy pequeño. No, lo que yo cuenta? te decía, de pronto es como que no se querían arriesgar antes. Ah, sí, sí. Y ya que... Como que cogió Sí, que fama. vieron que mucha gente la estaba viendo en La traen, sí, 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 sí. ¿Qué me estabas diciendo? ¿Yo me di cuenta? No, que es el mismo estudio que hizo Green Knight. Que no sé cómo se llama. Entonces, ¿Busco? se ve que están haciendo como producciones así, como grandes, pero como independientes, pero como raras, pero sí. como chéveres. ¿Quieres que busque? Si quieres, sí. A ver. ¿Quién? ¿Cuál es el estudio que está detrás? Everywhere, all at once. Eh, A24. Ah, A24. ¿Sí? Muéstrame el loguito, pon imágenes. Sí, ya, o sea, apenas lo leí. Ah, también dice Green Knight. Supe. No, no, no. Porque es que me acuerdo que sale en el trailer y sale en la sí, película. Sí, sí, ese también es el que hizo Green Knight. Sí, sí, sí. Y en esta me acuerdo que sale como con unos googly eyes. Este es el mm -hmm. que sale, mira. Sí, sí, sí. Sí. Eh, a ver. Sí, nosotros nos fuimos a ver Top Gun. Y además sí. fuimos... <risa> Ay, yo quiero contar. Sí. Yo ayer... We went to see Top Gun. Yeah. That's a movie. 
I'm trying to remember it because I would have been eight years old, I think. When I saw that movie, so I'm trying. I know my brother saw that movie. He absolutely adored that movie. Uh, he even had. I remember he even had the uh, tape, the official tape of Top Gun, like the uh, soundtrack. Um, so I know, I know, I saw it a million times. Mm -hmm. You know, we probably rented it a million times, and and I saw it eventually. You know, when I was in my teens, so like it was a million more. Eighty six. So no, 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 no. So I was, yeah, I thought that I can't be that young. But if I was nine, that is definitely like, a, I, I saw that movie in the theater. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I remember that movie. I, I have incredibly fond memories of the music in, of that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I think as everyone. Um, just, I, I don't know. I, I just have nothing. Like if I think of um, Gremlins, Ghostbusters, you know, Top Gun, uh, movies from that era, uh, Goonies. Mm -hmm. I have like th that; those movies are in my heart. Mm -hmm. Like uh, they are a hundred percent in my heart. So we wanted I, I, when when I noticed that it was coming. Uh, Danny saw it also like years ago. Yeah. that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of my dad. Yeah, because he loved it, and and I loved the song because of my dad. Oh, of course, it's a it's a great song, great soundtrack, mm -hmm. and um. And the funny thing is that uh, the 4D theaters, the ones that like move and uh -huh. they had been like closed the through pandemic. In. Exactly. Like they had been totally closed through pandemic. Yeah. So uh, I noticed that I think this was one, this has to be one of the first movies. Yeah, or maybe the first opened. one. I think so, because we had we've gone to the movies like. You know, we've gone for a couple for a few months to the movies because we actually really enjoy going to the movies. Mm -hmm. And but that theater that it's always closed. That um, la sala. <laughs> that um, um, what do you call that? Anyways, you know that one. Like the theater is open and every other room is you know is fine. But that particular one where they show the uh, where they have the moving 4D. chairs. Yeah. Yeah, it's always closed. It was it it had always been closed. We Since had seen, pandemic, yeah. yeah, we had seen I think Aquaman, Aquaman, yeah, and uh, Captain Marvel. I think we saw yeah. it also in those. So um, I actually the first time that I used those, I um I got dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like super pale, sweating. No, but I have to say that when we saw Aquaman, yeah, they like the movements were super. Tough. It was like extreme, and it was like. Not they were not even thinking about, uh, like echoing the movements with what's happening. They oh, were no, just anything. like kicking in the chair. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I remember they, they... someone cough, like someone could cough. Yeah, and they would like, you could feel like they were kicking your chair. So yeah, it didn't make sense. Well, in this, this one, one too. Did. I mean, this one. I mean, this one is a super cool experience. Yeah. With, uh, no, with the I really chairs. like it. The only funny part was. When uh, he drops a jacket, he drops a jacket, <laughs> and the chair and it was, was like, like an earthquake. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. but that's but that's fine. But tell the story, Danny. So, <laughs> um, everything started moving, and I mean, it's Top Gun. So airplanes, and at the beginning there were car cars. Yeah. So, uh, the chairs were moving a lot. <laughs> Quite a lot. Quite a lot. Yeah, people were like laughing at the beginning because I think that. We all haven't had that experience a long time ago, so we were just like laughing. And then a couple of, uh, I would say, older. The, yeah, yeah. Let's say they were the older, the the oldest, oldest people in the couple, theater. Yeah, and uh, got in late. <laughs> they came late. They came in late. Exactly, but they came in a part very formal that, too, very elegant. Like, yeah, she was wearing like a red blazer. Yeah, she yeah. Was, it was a date. Yeah, they were. I love them. I mean, oh. and she was uh, carrying a coffee. A hot yeah, coffee. a cup of coffee. Yeah. yeah, and they entered in a moment that it's super calm. Very calm. Nothing was happening. <laughs> yeah. They so, probably saw the chairs and they were like, look at these comfortable chairs. Yeah. They're like, this is amazing. So they were like adjusting everything. They were in front of us, like in a Did diagonal, they... but yeah, in front of us. And she managed to just sit down, like just touch the chair <laughs> and the airplane like went out. <laughs> yeah. So the chair moved and she just <laughs> threw the coffee. It was amazing. On herself. 
<laughs> and she couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> it was amazing. It was am- <laughs> that lady had no idea what was happening. <laughs> and it was beautiful to see. Like, <laughs> like the universe. We were talking about how Danny and I met at that precise moment in the universe. Oh, the chair. The and chair and woman. the lady met <laughs> at the exact moment in this so universe. Funny. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, it was so nice. She was like, I'm so excuse me, excuse me. And she's sitting and down. She was like gracefully sitting. Oh yeah, it's like oh, it's so per. And who brings coffee to a movie? So that that should let you know how old like these people were. But that's perfect. And as soon as she was sitting down, like the F eighteen took off. Like as soon as she put her butt down, F eighteen, like hyper speed. Uh, it was, per- it, was so it was beautiful. Funny. It was beautiful. And I loved her reaction. <laughs> Because I remember she was laughing and she couldn't stop laughing. I mean, maybe 10 minutes passed and she was still laughing and grabbing um, his uh, her partner's arm. And they were both laughing. No, I loved it. It was the best. And then her chair from <laughs> all the chairs in the theater was Start creaking. Sounding, yeah. So I'm pretty sure she just dropped the coffee <laughs> in all of the electronics of the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everyone's chair, everything. perfect. <laughs> and her chair would just sound like... Yeah. It was so, so funny. It was, it was great. I, I loved it. It was great. Ooh. As a movie, it's... I don't, I don't know if it's a great movie. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a super cool um, experience, I would say. Mm-hmm. Some of those shots are just absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'm gonna um you take invite dad, my yeah. dad. Yeah, but to the dynamics, to oh, the yeah. 40. Oh, yeah. it, it is one of those it's experience. I would I mean, say it's one of the few movies that would make kind of sense to go to one yes. of those things. Yes, and they even in like win more, or I don't know how to say, but say enriquecen. Yeah, it, it enriches the experience. Exactly. Yeah. The 4D. So but it was so, so funny. Oh, the lady was, it was priceless. Yeah. I loved her. Oh, she was amazing. She's never coming back to one of those chairs. <laughs> or if she does, she's telling all her friends, you have to sit quickly. You have to get early and sit quickly. No, and she was so cute because she was like, oh, I'm sorry. Because yeah. she was late. So she was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm, I'm sorry. S- yeah. And then she put her purse. I mean, yes, what you were saying, it was like perfect timing because she timed, I mean, she put her purse, then she adjusted her jacket, then she touched the chair and boom. <laughs> yeah, as soon as she's like, okay, let's sit down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My she, God. And I mean, we're not exaggerating. She did like this with the coffee. <laughs> it's exactly as it sounds. Yeah. It's literally exactly as it sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, it was amazing. Uh, Rajita said, Haha, you guys are the best storytellers and some laughing, crying emojis. I've missed this so much. It's been too long. Oh, happy to make you laugh as we yeah, laughed. But, but again, I mean, this it's was thanks to her. Yeah, this was but, the lady. <laughs> Should have taken a picture with her at the end. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Which is one of the things, when that happened, I was like, this could have been my mother. Like, th- these are the sort of things that literally always happen to my mother. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, I met it, Go- Gotherine was saying, it, it sure looks very solid in terms of foundation. Uh, when we were talking about classical academic ateliers. Yes. Uh, did you get a strong drawing education or were you genius disgustingly good right out of the box? Oh, no. We have to we have, to ca- have the, our, baby. Uh, the fist pumping baby I'm painting. I'm going to look for it right now. Fist, pu- fist pumping baby painting uh, just to show people where I started. <laughs> um, no, oh, so no, no. I opened and it's your Instagram. So I'm going to check it oh, on you your can Instagram. Ju- yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. It's annoying to have to scroll back so much. but No, I have fun. Well, um, I don't know how. No, no, no. I, you know, people like um, Isao Andrews, like Tomer, Tomer Hanuka, James Dean. Uh, James Jean, yeah. When, when, you know, when I saw them work, they were exceptional. Uh, people like uh, Dice Tsutsumi, they, they were amazing. 
Um, no, I don't think that's my case. I was more of a hard worker, but I was never, you know, talented, naturally talented in that way, I feel. So uh, I'm not saying that they didn't work hard. No, of course, like James is probably one of the hardest working people in all of art. Uh, same with Esau, same, you know, same with Tomer. Um, but uh, but I feel that I had to make up for uh, for the lack of of, you know, having this natural talent with the only thing that you can do, which is just work, you know. Trying to get there. It's very far down, I feel. <clears throat> Was it when we were living in the other apartment? Oh, yeah. I don't know when I posted that, Danny. I really don't. Mm -hmm. It must have been probably... 2020? Yeah, not even before that, I feel. No, I think you did it when we were live streaming already. Or not? No, I don't think so. Mm, let's see. Because I'm long back. I mean, yeah. I'm with the drawing rewards. No, I think it's farther back. <clears throat> My throat is just like... Better? No, terrible Worse after, after I... the story? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry. No. Mm, where is it? I have to find it. You have to find it and um, save the uh, image. Yes. Because my mother has the photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, because I remember horrible photo that I took, uh -huh. and I sent it. I mailed it back home. No, I think it was after this, Nicolas. But you're the one scrolling. You should have seen it. I, I guess. mean, I'm seeing Fer, and she's like three years old. Maybe. No, no, no. It was older than that. It was newer than that. More recent than that? Yeah. I don't think so, but... No, I'm in, in the beginning of your Instagram, so no. You know what I think? I I even think it was fate. I don't know. I don't no, no, no. Know it was Instagram. Was Instagram. No, it was Instagram. Maybe I it remember. Was Facebook. No, no, no. Um, let's see. Mm, nope. 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 Mm, nope. <clears throat> nope. I'm seeing Tyson as a baby. Well, as a puppy. Uh, in a picture you uploaded. <laughs> Maybe close to that? Maybe? No, I think it was when we started. It's okay. We can, post it. we can show it tomorrow or later. Or maybe you can uh, tell something. Say something while I look. Oh, no. It. No, I actually... You know why? Because every time you go, nope, <clears throat> nope, I know that many times you feel uncomfortable that maybe there's nothing going on. No, no, no. So we we don't have to talk. No, I don't. So we can we can not talk Silence until you live find stream. it. Because I'm super comfortable with not saying anything. Look at me. You well, I mean, you're talking. The sound about. of the brush. No, you're feeling the, the uh, silence. The sound though. of the brush. I feel like a robot. I think you could, you know, I think we could do that for, for, you know, tomorrow or later. No, uh, now I'm into it. Now I have to find it. No, but I'm saying I feel like a robot, robot, because I'm seeing so many images. Mm -hmm. Trying to. You're scanning. Yeah. Like I can't blink. Because maybe I'll lose it. No, fist pumping baby is um, unforgettable. It yeah, that thing is etched in your brain. Fist Was it maybe pumping, on maybe maybe? Yeah, I Babe, was thinking here it, was it is. Oh, is the, you did is like it? a collage? What year is it? Uh, seventy four weeks ago. Seventy four weeks ago. Really? Yeah, I told you it wasn't as uh, old as you thought. 74 weeks. That's a year and a half? Yep. Because wow. you said 
Um, but I mean, but that's the second time I post that. I know that I posted it on Facebook. I, I have, I'm a hundred percent sure. Like, it was, yeah. But um, I remember this because of what you were talking about and the comments. Fist pumping, so. baby. Oui. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where that comes from. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. Whew. No, I have to do a um, screenshot because I can't. Oh no, Instagram. From... Yeah, Instagram won't let you. Let's hope I um have the screenshot because I just uh, closed by accident. What? <laughs> the link. Okay, but if you close, if you if it didn't download, we'll do that some other. No, time. here it is. Here it is. The thing is that you have like a collage of it, mm -hmm. so it's like nine uh repeated images oh yeah just show all of them that's a warhol you know fist pumping baby yeah well it adds to it as the chairs add to the i mean movie. what's cooler than one fist pumping baby nine, nine fist pumping babies mm. eh, fist oops is the pumping baby baby uh over here save and yeah that was a huge expectation there and by the way i think almost mm -hmm. everyone knows that painting so no a lot of people that follow us know that painting. So, so this was one of the first paintings Nicolas did. I'm yeah. going to put it super big on the screen. I'm going to say it was my... <laughs> okay, first painting for sure was the pony in the stable. Um, like a red pony in a stable. Um, Wait, I think I'm, yeah. maybe... No, I red have pony to... is not... No, no, no. Maybe I have to block someone. Um, so thank you, Siju, for what you're saying about me, but, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't do that. Come on. So let's, uh, put in timeout. Um, no, if it was way overboard. No, no, no. I, I mean, I they're saying like, yeah, my baby look good. Hi, my baby. I love you. Wait. So I mean, maybe they were talking about my baby. No, no, no. It was before. I mean, it started a long time ago. So I'm gonna take that as my baby. Mm, like it no. was a compliment to my painting. Okay, let's <laughs> see. So maybe I just uh, timed out uh, by accident. Yes. Um, and if you're not, don't be creepy and weird, and don't say stuff like that. Nobody likes that. No, and and I mean, thank you. I. Acknowledge yeah. the things you're saying, but yeah, but no, Come yeah, on. exactly. No, nobody, no, that's never cool. Mm. Yeah, you said maybe they were talking about Nico, yeah, yeah maybe again. they predicted the baby appearing because they were saying baby what if they, a long time, like ago. the lady in the chair in the movie, they no, were waiting it was before they had been waiting for months, <laughs> months, <clears throat> they were like, <clears throat> they. One day they're gonna show fist pumping baby, and I'm gonna be there. Yeah, maybe. And, and maybe we started I just... mentioning it. They were like, "Yes!" And then, no, finally, no, I'm time in time out. out. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was the uh, fist pumping baby. It has to the be actual the baby. second or uh, third painting I did. Mm. Second or third. I'm I'm, I'm trying, I remember the first exercise that we did. I'm trying to remember. So th this, these were big paintings and eventually we would do smaller exercise or I don't know if parallel to the big paintings, we would do um, these other exercises. <clears throat> I'm trying to think, 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 think. I don't remember, but yeah, it was second or third time I ever painted. So that was my start. So don't ever tell me that um, that you can't learn stuff because I had to learn a lot. 
Mm. <clears throat> I can't um, recuperate, as you say, from my <clears throat> laughing moment. Okay. Because my throat is like still there. Still there? Yeah. Well, glad to know that your throat is still there. No, I mean there in that moment. Like I lost it. I can't recuperate it. That's why oh, I'm saying. Oh, there we go. I think I get you. <coughs> mm. I'm sorry, everyone. No, no. Um, um, Roslyn. Yeah. Oh, so Ro. the road to the rose are Ro, uh, how are we completed. doing? Just give us a thumbs up, a banana up. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the person I put in timeout was sending some bananas. So maybe they were for Rosalyn. <laughs> they were summoning, you know, <laughs> potassium. Yeah. <laughs> vitamin K. Yeah, yeah. Rosalyn, how are we doing? Maybe he comes from the Without future. Without being too specific, how are we doing? Better? And you know that our heart is with, like, hoping that better. And we're happy to have you here. Always, always. Rosalyn was saying... Uh, this painting looks beautiful. You always inspire, Nicolas. Danny, I love your shirt. Oh, thank mm. you. Oh, well, this is the shirt. But this one's like a um, cardigan. So it has. I'm going to show it to Rosalyn. Oh, only to Rosalyn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, these stripes here, green stripes here and uh, red stripes down and like some uh trenzas how do you say trenzas what trenzas i was trying to joke no you some you, braids uh, there we like go. a braided um uh, uh, i wanted to see what you came up with no i know that please i mean braids come on easy peasy maybe you don't know them no i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> mm. Nikola Smijarevich mm -hmm. was saying, what do you think about disrupted realism? What uh, is that? And they were saying John Seed. Is, oh. it, is it valid as a ca category of contemporary representational painting? Oh, wow. A lot of these painters were classically trained. Do you think they, including you, Nicolas, want to escape the constraints of academic realism in their own way, which is why they disrupted? Sorry for long questions. No, awesome not at discussion. All. Um, no, I am vaguely, vaguely <laughs> familiar with um, John Seed. with the term. I know he put out a book. I don't have the book, um, so I don't really know the painters that are there. Um, I I think I know some of the painters that are there. I know them personally, but as a um, you know, as a as a curatorial exercise, I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't. Somebody asked me the other day if I was a perceptual painter, and I was like, I, "Is that? A, I mean, I know that that's a thing. I know I've I've followed that blog for years, um, and I actually happen to like a ton of the painters that are you know, um, kind of exhibited there." Is that a thing? Like, I don't know. Do you have to sign up to be a perceptual painter? Do you just have to follow that philosophy of thought? Do you pay a fee? Is there like a thing that you have to do? Because I, I I'm just, I, honestly, I'm, I'm just being like um, a dumbass saying those things. But I, I'm probably saying them because I just don't, I don't think there's isms today. I mean, there's easy ways to say, hey, this is under this kind of vague umbrella, you could fit, you know, these artists that are working, you know, with these kind of objectives today. But aside from that, you know, there's no manifesto to these things. So there's there's no kind of formal way of saying, hey, or I, I would feel weird if, if somebody saw me and um, what was the term disrupted realist? Yeah. Oh, you're a disrupted realist. I would be like, what the hell does that mean? What is that? <laughs> no, I am Nicolas. I would, I would say like, what? What does that mean? I don't know. And the only reason I would say I, I'm being, 
I'm being hesitant about these things is that I don't want to push somebody else's agenda, by the way. I don't. Like if if John has a view that he wants to um, portray, that's great. But I don't, like I would be, I would feel a little weird to say, um, I'll give you an example and I'll I'm going to make this public even though, it, you know, it's, it, and I know it's fine. I know it's fine. I know this is totally fine. I'm not thinking that this is closing doors for me or anything like that. But um, I would say last year, or maybe this year, I probably have the uh, the uh, message still here. But uh, the MEAM, you know, the museum in Barcelona, they asked me if I was interested in... Okay. They, they asked me if I was interested in doing some courses over there. And... I have been highly critical of the ma'am, especially with like the um, people that were in charge of it, you know, years ago. I saw the ma'am be, you know, you know, push uh, this, a sort of uh, realism in painting that I was never really quite interested. It was mostly uh, hyper realistic women, mostly naked. It was really super tacky painting what they were doing um, a, a bunch of years ago, and thankfully it opened up and 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 they clearly have made an effort to to be a little broader to light you know to expand their view a little bit more, and that's totally fine. I'll give that to them. That's awesome. But if you still go to the ma'am and then go to their blog, where they have their manifesto, it is so dogmatic. It is so, so dogmatic that I just don't, I don't like it. It would be weird. It would be so weird for me to be hired by somebody who I don't agree with in so many things. So even though you could say, hey, are you, are you for pushing this kind of new realism or this new um, way of understanding figurative painting and discipline and you could argue that, of course I am. Yeah, that's great. But there's so many things that I don't like about, you know, things that are said in, in particularly, I'm going to say in the, in the ma'am, that I do feel are constraining, that every time I feel like, hey, you know, this is us and we push this sort of painting. And I'm like, I don't really push any sort of painting. I like painting. I like painting. Like, painting is in the act of painting that spans centuries. And a lot of these people have like, um, um, they, they don't like the 20th century. They really didn't like the 20th century. It's almost like as if it was personal for them that, you know, um, abstract expressionism was, yeah, and conceptual art uh, it eventually became this force that negated um, um, traditional painting and tried to destroy traditional painting and now it's like now we defend ourselves and now you know we are the ones that are in charge and for example a lot of people are super happy that figurative painting now is super super in vogue and it's like I feel weird because it's like dude I'm going to paint figures when there are you know when it's hot to paint figures I'm going to paint figures when nobody cares about painting figures. I'm going to do what I do, but because, you know, I don't I don't really care about those those movements. So um yeah, so I I've always been very sincere with that because I don't like to push I I I would never be able to be attached to places that feel like they are far more constraining than the beliefs that I have. Uh then and and that you know, beliefs that it's not my place to try to promote them or to be, you know, the person that has, you know, that that bears the torch for these, that carries the torch for this, you know, new movement of painting. No, not at all. Like people can make up their own minds. I always feel like, hey, it's your path, dude. Like you can like whatever you like. But in that same sense, like I'm going to tell you what I like. And if I don't agree with something, I just don't make me part of that. That's that's weird. So it's super hard for me to to um, be included in stuff that I just don't, I don't know. I would have to read that book first and see what that means. 
but I I don't like to be put under a whole like umbrella that that would cover like so many other people. It's like sure I have tons of things in common with other painters I'm sure, but but I don't know if I don't want to be like I don't want my painting to be used to push somebody else's agenda. And I'm sure John is a super nice guy, super cool, and he's really cool. At, uh, really, you know, it's really great that he promotes a bunch of things, a bunch of like other painters, like great painters work. And that's super awesome. But I don't know. I'm, I'm the sort of painter that goes like, yeah, sure. That, I mean, that, that, that isms died a long, long time ago. I think that it's, it's just um, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. They call painting. So if you want to, um, if you want to see this, see it this way, they call any sort of painting, any form of painting, uh, really funny. I actually like this term. They call all of it. Doesn't matter if you're doing abstract work, if you're doing figurative work, if you're doing like uh, queer intimist work. If you do, it doesn't matter. If you're doing um, what was the, what was it called? The John C. Dis, disrupted. Uh, disrupted realism, disrupted uh, or realism. perceptual painting. There are people that are so bored by painting that they call every form of contemporary painting zombie formalism. So I think that that's super cool. I think that's a super cool term. It's like us desperately trying to revive stuff that's already been dead in the past. So I actually like that one. So I wouldn't mind, even though it's like completely offensive and it's against painting, you know, fundamentally, I wouldn't mind you know, if somebody called me a zombie, zombie formalist, and I, I'm completely aware that it means of what it means, but I, I actually like that one. So yeah, so I'm not disrupted realism. You can call me a zombie formalist. I think mm. that's pretty cool. So I was gonna, you know, while you do that, let me look for, uh, for something, because I, I, I want to be fair also, because maybe that sort of manifesto they took down the ma'am. So I'm going to look and see if they took it down. But if it's up, I'm also going to say, hey, it's still up and it's not something that I entirely agree with still. And it's making harder for me to say I want to be part of that. Yes, Danny, you were saying. Sorry. Um. So. Mm, uh. Roslyn yes. was saying, I got home last night. Yes. Still a little, little grouchy, but I'm good. Okay. And uh, Julia. Julia, who is that? Julia was saying, now who? I have fist pumping baby playing in my head over and over. Fist pumping baby. <laughs> that was a good one. I'm, I'm there. Roslyn said. I'm 100% there. Uh, Julia, Julia, first Fist pump baby is stuck in my head too. Jair Piñeros dice said, "What if someone is in wait? I'm wait. sorry, it wasn't what. It was wait. 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 If someone is in timeout, do they still can see the stream? Yeah. And Julia said, Jair, yes, you can. I know by <laughs> experience. <laughs> yes." Uh, we playing one time. I mean, Julia is a friend of ours, and we uh, timed out Julia. <laughs> um, Alejandro Morales was saying, Rosalind, excuse my ignorance. Why are Daniel and Nicolas always talking about Roro? What's your relationship? So we always say, Oh, I'm sorry, I kicked my hand. Uh, Ro from Robin. Row from Roslyn, which both are one of the first uh, people that supported our channel and that were part of uh, our painted lives. Yes. And that still are part. Very and, much so. Yeah, and are very loving to us. Yeah, we, we were super lucky to meet um, IRL uh, Ooh, Robin. IRL. Mm -hmm. In real life, yeah. Uh, Robin uh, just recently. IRL And Air we have w. plans... Whatever those may be that involve, uh, you know, overpriced houses and uh, mimosas. Yeah. Uh, to meet uh, Rosalind and in the And you future. Uh, driving the car. No, not at all. I'm going to be in the backyard. Destination I'm going to be in the backyard. Of every house. Yeah, Just, checking no, it I'm out. I'm going to be waiting for you. Just drop me off at a Walmart What or backyard? I'll be fine there. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Nikola Smitjarevich said, I love yeah. your answer. It was very helpful and I completely agree. Um, I, oh, I kicked again. the camera again. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm, I'm on point today. Jair said, aren't we all friends here? Yes, we are. Of course we are. I mean, I was saying that uh, Rosalind and Robin are our friends, but that doesn't mean... I'm saying no one else is a friend. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, Come on. So Yeah, please, please, please. Yeah, I feel like when you say to uh, Fer, Fer, not because I'm telling Samu I love him. It doesn't mean, like, that doesn't mean I don't love you. I'm just saying Samu in this moment that I love him. Yes. So, Jair. Jair. We're all friends. We're all, and we love you. Uh, Robin said... Wow, send it an emoji that I've never seen before. Yeah? It's like a bus. A bus? Yeah, look. Look at it. Oh, the row bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 with the uh, cabs and the um, ambulance and, you know. I've never seen it. And it says, not over yet. Uh, Roslyn. And Roslyn said, ha, ha, ha. Uh, Resident Evil for Modo HD Remake Games Play. Mm. Dice, buenas tardes, our painted lives. Buenas tardes, ¿Cómo están? Me, lo recuerdo, Saludos. recuerdo ese, ese username. Eh, buenas Venezuela, tardes, ¿no es? estamos ¿No es muy Venezuela? bien. Sí. Creo que es venezolano, hermano oh, venezolano. Wait, I want to know. So please, Invictus Art. Okay. If you're still here, uh, let me know in a comment. Because... Um, I was going to read uh, their comment when where they said that they already sent us the painting of the shoes. But I see a new comment that says, By the way, every time I watch this stream, I learn a life lesson. So thank you. Now I have to go to bed. Good stream, everyone. So I don't know mm, what if happened? they're still here. No, if they're still here. Oh, but you saw the... Uh... No, I mean... I just saw the message. Oh, okay. I thought you, you were going to say, no, but I haven't gotten the... Uh... No, no, no. I was going to say that if they're still here, we can talk about the painting because I don't know if they would be okay about us talking about their painting if they're not here. So I would mm. rather have them here. Yeah. Um. Uh, let's see. Uh, Liet said, I think I'm an unperceptual painter. Unperceptual painter? <laughs> mm. Roslyn was saying about my sweater. Yeah. Love the stripes. Very cool. It's classy. Ooh. Ooh, thank you. Um... Jair Piñeras was asking, who are you painting? So, as we said in the uh, beginning, but we'll say it again, don't, that's totally fine. This is a uh, great painter, Tommy, Tommy Golinski. Mm -hmm. uh, so check his uh, Instagram out, check his uh, TikTok out. And um, he's a pretty cool guy. Uh, Liad was at saying a painting question for Nicolas. Please, yes. Have you ever tried titanium white with sunflower oil from Emgram? Mm, sunflower? No, 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 not that one. Nope. Mm. Uh, I don't really know if if I've tried paint with sunflower oil. To be honest, yeah, sunflower, safflower. Uh, well, they wrote sunflower. So, I don't know. Yeah. Is it sunflower? Do you want me to check? Well, yeah. I'm very curious. Because sunflower oil is a cooking oil. Well, it says titanium white sunflower. What? Yeah. Titanium white sunflower. What? Is somewhat 
warmer and yeah. more opaque wait, than though. a regular titanium titanium white. Wait, a zinc free white ground. Okay. In a, in a historical oil. Yeah. With lush handling characteristics. Wait, though, because this is I'm going to be ignorant here, but you know I don't I don't mind um, showcasing my ignorance. Wait, is sunflower oil Wait. a drying oil? What? I thought almost all cooking oils were non-drying oils. That one's a new one for me. Where's my uh where's my uh my handbook? Do you want it? Yeah, could you would, would you mind? It's it's no. in the closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I got to read this. <laughs> Where is my handbook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need my mayor handbook here. Let me see this. Crack my knuckles. Yeah. Wait a second. Sunflower oil. I don't think I've ever heard of paint ground in sunflower oil. Yeah. Oh, no, look at the book. I mean, this book has seen better days. Look at that mold there. Nice. Oh, yeah. So that's my copy of when I was a student. Let's see. Let's see. Sunflower. Let's go to the index. Sunflower oil. Jump, 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 jump. Sunflower. So, 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 supplies, sun thickened. Sunflower seed oil, 177. There's only one page for sunflower oil in all of this handbook. So, it should be interesting. Sunflower oil. Panacotic was saying, next Other? up, olive oil painting. Yeah, what the hell? Oh, it's a semi. Let me see. Are this is this here? No, sunflower seed <laughs> and hemp seed oil have properties resembling those of poppy oil and have been used in Europe as linseed oil substitutes. The drying properties of hemp seed oil were known to some of the early writers. They are, however, inferior to those of poppy oil, according to modern investigators. Yeah, I I always thought other drying oils. Yeah, look at this. I had no idea. That safflower, because we use safflower oil a lot here in Colombia as cooking oil, aceite girasol. Mm -hmm. We use it a lot, but for cooking oil, I never. And in my mind, but estás diciendo safflower y no sunflower. No sunflower, sunflower. Ah, pero es que son dos distintas. Oh yeah, safflower oil you can see everywhere, and and they use it a lot because it's clearer, it's uh, lighter than linseed oil. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't yellow as much. So that's why most paintings nowadays, they are in safflower oil. Yeah, no, no, no. I just asked because it sound like yeah, safflower and not sunflower. Yeah, that's what I thought. But sunflower, wow. Because I always, in my ignorance, and I'm, I'm fine saying that, um, I always associated cooking oils with uh, non-drying oils. So that wasn't the case. There mm -hmm. are cooking oils that you can paint with. Wow. Love to learn stuff. Love to learn stuff. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's certainly not a popular painting oil for sure. A sunflower oil, sunflower seed oil. Wow. There are also, I don't know if you know, if you knew this, Danny, but there are um, semi drying oils also. Mm -hmm. mm, they dry extremely slow, obviously. That's, you know, hence the name. Um, maybe more rapidly dry by the addition of dryers or heat. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, they are occasionally used to adulterate cheap paints. That sounds like something we would do. Um, cottonseed oil, corn, maize oil. So those are two that we use for sure. Yeah, look at that. The more you know. That's amazing. So thank you for making me uh, search for that, Liad. No, no idea. Now I'm super curious, but I'm also super curious about drying times. I don't know how no, fast. No, yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, now I'm like super, super curious. Uh, Roslyn was asking, Liad, have you used the sunflower oil? Thoughts? And Liad said, Roslyn, I haven't, but I ordered it. Oh, so let I us will know. try it that's out. That's exciting. 
when it arrives and report back. Yeah, please, because I have never seen. I mean, maybe maybe some of you guys have have uh, that experience. Um, God, I'm trying to move my mic. Um, but the uh, I've never seen sunflower mediums, like sunflower oil, um, sold as a medium for paint. Or at least I'm not aware of it. Like I'm super unaware of it. But I don't think it's popular enough to see to to be com like as ubiquitous as poppy or um, linseed oil, um, walnut oil, you know, safflower oil. I don't. I just don't. That's why at the beginning I had to do like a double take because I was like sunflower. What? Nikola Spijarovic said, I keep my brushes in sunflower oil. Haha. <laughs> no, there you go. I mean, I mean, for, for those purposes, like it's I, handy. Could, I can understand it, but I just never associated like historically. I don't think I know of painters that used. Do you know, Liad? Do you know of painters that so used sunflower oil in their paintings? I mean, it says that Europe used it you know, instead of linseed oils. So, I mean, most painters used linseed oil. Sure. What? This is weird and fun. What? No, I mean, what? I wrote historical painters who used sunflower oils. And I, the only thing I get are uh, Van Gogh's sunflowers. Oh, yeah. If I mean, say, look at the images. Yeah, no. If you, say if you search for sunflowers and sunflower, painting, yeah, yeah that is that is never going to give you an answer. No, this is... I, I, I would guess this is something very particular, like super, super particular. And I th I think that the fact that it's like a, a single paragraph in, in like a mayor handbook shows you that it's not super well-known. I wonder if more like uh, Renaissance painting. No, I don't like I don't get a result. Yeah, it's very tough. It would be very tough. Because yeah, I, I only put I mean, I wrote sunflower oils, Renaissance painters, and I see sunflower paintings again. Yeah, no, that's never. Yeah. So. Does, does anyone know this? Like, if if there was common at some point during the Renaissance to, um, or at some point during the, uh, you know, I don't know, 19th century, or at some point during some time, can anyone, you know, help us Google that? Because I certainly don't, didn't have that in my, like, memory bank. M.M. Borg 00, mm. so Monique. Was saying mm -hmm. just turning in, tuning in. Yeah. Wow, great portrait and a smiley face. It's, Hello, everyone. It's all Tommy. Hi, Monique. Hey, Happy Monique. to have you here. Yes. Liad said, I don't know of painters that have used it. It's probably not pure sunflower oil, but probably mixed with another oil. I don't think so, Liad. I think, could you read the, the, the uh, description, the M gram description again, Danny? Do, would you mind? No. No, o sea, no mind. No me preocupes. No mind. Mm. Is this from their website also? Yeah, their website. Okay. No, it's just that. It says titanium white sunflower is somewhat warmer and more opaque than a regular titanium white. A zinc free white. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, it's my pure throat. titanium. That's, that's... A zinc free white ground. Mm -hmm. In an historical oil with lush handling characteristics. Okay. So pigment composition. Yeah, but that's titanium. Uh, lasting rating or opacity? Nope, nope. Wow, I'm so curious. Like, why that? Why are they saying? How do they describe it? Uh, historical. His, uh, historic oil. Why would they say it like that? And so um. I don't know. It says details and they have another tab that says why walnut oil. So maybe they mix it with wa walnut, walnut oil. oil. Yeah. It says we choose to build our oil paint with this oil. So walnut oil. Yeah. Because it 
because its unique refractive index and non-yellowing nature produces color that is more naturally alive and brilliant. Mm -hmm. In addition, walnut oil allows us to increase the amount of pigment in each color, resulting in extraordinary richness, color saturation, brilliance, and tinting strength. No, that's all good. That's all yeah, but wonderful. I, I mean, I was reading but this because I don't know if maybe they, they're trying to say that they mix the sunflower with the walnut oil. Yeah. So let me check. We should maybe... write to them. I'll, I'll write to them. They'll never answer, but at <laughs> least we can try. It's like my Craig Mullins um, efforts. Mm. Yeah, Liad was saying they use walnut oil in most of their oil paints. Right. Mm, Julia Tover. Mm, who is that? Was saying, Danny, question. Ooh. Mm, for Danny. Do you prefer to watch SpongeBob in Spanish or in English? And what about Shrek and Toy Story? <laughs> so for me, always, always, always in Spanish. Because I grew up with those movies in Spanish. So SpongeBob's, uh, like, sound, like his voice in English, is kind of weird to me. It's not, it's unfamiliar to me, let's say. I can enjoy it too, but I I got to love him in English, in Spanish. So that's why I see him in Spanish. Him. I see uh, SpongeBob in Spanish and the movies. Because um, I would say that uh, Pixar. And it's, 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 I'm sorry, is, is SpongeBob like genderless or... Because I know a lot of people tie it with. No, I like, think they uh, said it was. Uh, he was a day. Okay. Some time like ago. Officially. So, yeah. So my bad. No, 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 no. Uh. And um. No, I was saying that some animated movies. Yeah. Have really good translations, like the Toy Story movies, are amazing in Spanish. I have to say. All the songs in Spanish, mm -hmm. 10 out of 10. Like the whole experience of the movies, 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in Spanish. Do you think There's... you've cried in all of them? Think about it. Did I cry in all of the movies? In or all in the, all uh, of the SpongeBob uh, chapters? <laughs> no, in all <laughs> of the uh, Toy Story ones. Uh, well, I know for sure the one I cried Toy Story 2 the for most sure, in. Yeah. Exactly. Is Toy Story 2 in the moment uh, they oh, Jesse. sing the song about Jesse, yeah. abandoning Jesse? Don't, yeah, that's a tough one. Don't get me started because I will cry again. I know, I'm, I'm searching for <sighs> that. And um, yeah, I think maybe I cried in everyone. Um, maybe. Maybe. Julia Tovar. Mm, who is that? Said same. But Encanto, I tried to watch it in Spanish, but I couldn't stand it. Really? O sea, Julia, la más. La, la más. La única que se la... tenía que ver en español. <risa> la única, o sea, la única que era como vio a Colombia. O sea, que tenía los actores colombianos. La única. Sí. Gracias, Julia. Time no. out para Julia. Sí, de porfa, nuevo. porfa, mete, <risa> mételo con el chico. No, el, el chico ya salió del timeout y puso un corazón partido. Y no volvió a comentar nada. Ah, bueno. Así que como ha callado. Eh, Lola Onigiri dice, ja, 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 ja. Y Julia dice, ja, 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 me desesperan los acentos. Los acentos de tu tierra, ¿Los acentos Julia? colombianos, Julia? No, que está... Pa... Por favor, timeout. Timeout sí. para Julia. Oh, time no, out. otra vez, dice Julia, ja, ja, ja. No, pero no la quiero timeoutear. Yo sí, yo sí. Timeout para Julia, por favor. Eh. Sí, es que me da miedo que sí, después sí, no la quiten del a, canal. Estamos a dos semanas de poder salvar este país en las elecciones y Julia dice que no se aguanta los acentos colombianos. <risa> eh, Así no se puede. Lola Onigiri dice, ja, 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 a Julia le dan mucho palo. Es que a Julia, igual como la conocemos en persona... Sí, Julia, voy, voy a... Es un nivel de... Sí, de... Voy, a, voy a... Para las personas que de pronto no saben. <risa> Julia dice, Nico, no. <risa> Julia, Julia fue 
mi estudiante y la quise muchísimo y la sigo queriendo muchísimo. Pienso que es súper talentosa. Se me hace que Julia es, es absolutamente genial. Eh, además, fui el asesor de tesis de Julia, entonces tuve la maravillosa oportunidad de acompañarla en una tesis que siento que ha sido como de mis tesis favoritas en sí. toda, toda la universidad. En todos los, los 12 años que estuve de profe, fue de las tesis que más chévere se me hizo. Y que somos muy afortunados ahora sí, de Sí, tenemos tener un pedacito de esa, de esa tesis. tesis. Julia nos, nos hizo el favor de, de vendernos un, un pedacito del, de la tesis, porque yo siempre, de nuevo, siempre tuve como las, los mejores recuerdos de ese, de ese momento. Entonces yo, yo quería como poder tener como un... ¡Ah! ¿Qué estoy haciendo? Un ¿Qué recuerdo. Qué es sonido, no, no sé, como... me fui al amarillo. La profesora. Hoy. Cogí el amarillo, no sé por qué. Eh, pero no, que los tú, tengo los mejores recuerdos de Julia. Entonces, no, no, no. Es ¿Sabes alguien... quién es la profesora, Abe? Eh, la de... Es que te dije que sonaste porque literalmente, o sea, no sabía que en mi cerebro seguía el nombre de ella y apenas dijiste, me sentí viendo. Jimmy Neutron. Ah, no, era yo, no era, yo no era de tan Jimmy fan de Jimmy. No, no, pensé No sé que... si alguien acá que se vio eh, Jimmy Neutron. No, dijiste, decir... dijiste profesora y de pronto lo profesora asocié. Profesora Abby. No, de pronto lo asocié con la profe, la de Gumball. No, 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 no. Esto pero es... esa también habla escandaloso. No, 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 pero esto es tiempo atrás, discúlpame. No, pero Gombal es increíble. Acá pues, estaría sí. Fer, Fer te patea sí, sí, la sí. lonchera. Pues sí, pero es que eh, Jimmy Neutron era como Gombal para ella. O sea, ella creció con eso, yo crecí con Jimmy ¿Ese... Neutron. ¿Jimmy es tu Gombal? No, pues, Gumball no sé, es pero a mí Jimmy Neutron Jimmy. me encantaba. ¿Sí? Es que, mira, salió, a ver, Jimmy Neutron. Eh... Episodio. Es que yo, yo me vi algunos de Jimmy y no se me hacía tan A mí sí chévere. me gusta. Cuidadito. No, ahorita creo que me Cuidadito. van a hinchar, sí. Eh... Mm... When Pants Attack. Esa es la primera. Pero y no me dicen la fecha. ¿2002? Dice acá. ¿2001? Dice acá. Pues sí. Sí, pero. No, bueno. es que esa es toda mi época. Um... Donde yo, no sé... Mira, época... Sergi Arts dice, ja, 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 ja. Y Damián Alquichire dice, sonó igualito a la profesora Abe, ja, 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 ja. Ay, no, pues, los sí. montadores Abe. No, te lo prometo, o sea, fue como tenerla aquí. <risa> <risa> a ver, espera. Eh... Julia dice, y dicho todo eso tan lindo, time out. Pues 100%, ¿qué, ¿qué es eso de que todos los acentos me desesperan? No, va a votar por Rodolfo. Profesora Ave. Arg. Eh, no. Muéstramela porque ni siquiera sé cómo es. Ay, por Dios. Ay, pero pues, a ver, por no Dios. sé cómo es, no sé, estoy Sigue aceptando. Tundiéndote. Estoy aceptando. ¿Qué es eso? Horrible, pues no horrible por vieja, pero... Bueno, sí. ¿Y por qué es que hice el ruido? Ya ni me acuerdo. No, ¿Qué hice? Dijiste, ¡Ah! No sé, como que se te cayó algo. Ah, ¿no? saqué amarillo. Sí, sí, sí. pero ella pena. decía... ¡Ah! Sí, soné Entonces, como un pájaro ahí, sí, sí, es verdad. Es verdad. Um, Jared Kidd was saying, hey everyone. Hey. Hi, Jared. Jared. Um, A ver, eh, a ver, a ver, eh, dice, uh, Nicolás Rodríguez dice, mm -hmm. ¿Sumer se ha probado alguna de las pinturas de óleo de Franco Arte? Veo que, por ejemplo, en el blanco de titanio usan aceite de soya. No, las de Franco Nicolás, esto es Nicolás, el, el Nicolás que conozco. Eh, pero no, he probado algunas, he probado algunas Nicolás de, de Franco, sí. Uy, es que Franco no es bueno, la verdad, le digo con toda honestidad. Yo sé que es producto colombiano, yo sé que tenemos que, que proteger nuestra industria, que estar orgullosos, pero las pinturas son re malas. Eh... 
y no sabía que tenían eh, óleo soya. ¿Qué era? ¿Qué? Sí, soya. Óleo sola. Óleo soya. soya es saludable. Eh, a ver. A ver, a ver. Coquín. Eh... Me dice si responde Nicolás. Sí. Si es el Nicolás que conozco. Eh, Julia Tover. ¿Quién es? Ah, bueno, como estabas diciendo lo del acento. Sí. Julia dice, jajaja, ja, ja, no, porque Rodolfo también tiene acento, jajaja. Ja, ja. mm -mm. Sergi Arts dice, pregunta para Nico. No, eso sonó, ¿cómo así que Rodolfo tiene acento? No. Yo tengo acento, Julia. Pues sí, eso sonó como mis me... Ay, no, yo, mis Oye, mejores Azulia, amigos. Azulia. Algunos, Azulia. Julia. <risa> Julia también tiene acento. Sí. ¿No? Claro. Sí, Julia tiene un acento, no, no lo voy a... No, es que, o sea, lo que hoy es todo el mundo tiene acento. Todo el mundo tiene acento. ¿Julia? Mm. ¿Dónde está el time out? Mm. Block from channel. <risa> <risa> Julia, eh, por favor, vuelva a abrir otra... Vuelva con otra cuenta. No, no la bloqueé, no la voy a... Ni la time out mm. eh, ¿Estuviera a cargo de ese chat? No, pues estarías hablando solo. Sí, chao, chao. <risa> Eh, Sergi Arts dice Ah, bueno, espera Iván dice Franco es bueno para imprimar Pero algunos para algunos ejercicios También tengo óleos soya Óleo soya de color blanco Óleo soya mm. Ahora tienes que usarlo, Nicolás Solo También por decir óleo, óleo soya, soya. Para hacer las Pintando huevos. con óleo soya sí. eh, Y con un sombrero volteado Voy a, voy a pintar Sergi Arts dice, pregunta para Nico. Señor. ¿Crees que dibujar todos los días, aunque sea solo un retrato, ayudaría a mejorar? Mi intuición me dice que sí, pero a lo mejor me acabo quemando mucho. I don't know. Pues yo pensaría, sí, 100%. O sea, seguramente uno mejora más cuando es una... Cuando el proceso de dibujar es mmm, dirigido... Por dirigido me refiero a que si hay como objetivos más específicos y retos más específicos y si la sucesión de esos retos eh, está como dirigida al a un mejoramiento como en particular, pues sí, o sea, y eso, y eso es lo que uno normalmente, eh, esa es la experiencia que uno normalmente tiene cuando uno está poniéndose en las manos como de un profe súper chévere. Entonces, yo en manos de mis profes, uy, o sea, incluso, bueno, no sé si hoy en día, pero, pero de los momentos que más he disfrutado en mi vida el dibujar era bajo la, como la dirección de un profe a quien respetaba. Esos momentos son maravillosos. Entonces, eh, creo que sí, o sea, que si uno le va a dedicar tiempo al... al al estudiar y al trabajar, seguro, siempre funciona. Y, y para mí lo que dice como, no, es un retrato al día, pues da la misma. Yo lo único que diría, pues sí, haga un retrato, pero también haga su cuarto, dibuje su cuarto y dibuje sus muebles y dibuje, no sé, la calle que está enfrente y dibuje lo que se está comiendo y dibuje la ropa que se va a poner ese día. Y, o sea, no siempre tiene que ser eh, un retrato. Eh, y, y yo creo que en esa variedad también está eh, como el secreto para, para ganar un poquitico de esa versatilidad que se necesita para, para avanzar y mejorar. ¿Qué suena? La obra, lindita, es que estamos rodeados ah, de obras. Suena como, no sé, como un alien. No. Julia dice, perdón, me voy a timeoutear solita un no, rato. No, qué tal. <risa> eh, Lola Onigiri. Dice, tengo una pregunta. Sí, señora. ¿Cómo calificas a una obra de buena y otra de mala? Mm. No es en mal plan, sino que de verdad me da curiosidad. Uy, súper difícil esa. O sea, para dar una respuesta fácil, no. Es súper complejo cómo responder eso. O sea, esa fue, ese, ese fue siempre el reto en la, en, estando en la universidad o estando así, siendo parte de de espacios académicos donde pues el objetivo siempre es juzgar de la manera más como saludable a todo el, a todo el mundo, de la manera eh, más imparcial a todo el mundo 
es súper, es súper difícil eh, decir, no, se, estas son las normas sobre, sobre las que podemos con certeza evaluar una obra de arte. Pero, habiendo dicho eso, o sea, uno tiene que hacer el ejercicio, porque uno como profe pues, siempre tiene que poner una nota y la nota pues, siempre va a ser además conocida por el grupo y si es conocida por el grupo, pues tiene que tener un... O sea, tiene que tener una razón de, de ser. El grupo tiene que entender por qué una persona sacó más, por qué una persona sacó menos. O sea, y uno tiene que tratar de ser elocuente al, al intentar explicarle al grupo, al intentar socializar, por qué uno siente que, que una obra cumplió con unos requisitos más que otra. Entonces, hay como varias maneras de entender eso. La primera es la más fácil, que es que haya un ejercicio en particular que uno quiera promover y el ejercicio tenga un objetivo súper específico. Y entonces, en la medida en que se cumple ese objetivo, pues las personas pueden tener una mejor calificación y en la medida en que se alejen, las personas se alejen de ese objetivo, pues entonces tienen otra calificación. Y eso es súper fácil, eso es como entendiendo que hay un punto de partida que todos compartimos. Pero cuando uno está evaluando una obra que uno no conoce, es súper complejo, porque uno dice, bueno, ¿y qué será lo que ellos trataron de hacer? O sea, ¿qué será lo que hizo que, esta, que este ejercicio en particular eh, fuera algo que estas personas quisieran pintar? Y entonces ahí es re difícil, ahí es re difícil uno con certeza o con, con un grado de certeza por lo menos, eh, poder, poder evaluar una obra. La manera más fácil de evaluarla es desde, las, desde fundamentos de, de arte. O sea, eh, cómo es la composición, cómo es el uso de color, eh, cómo es la disposición de las formas. Eh, o sea, hay, hay, hay unas maneras de, de, de juzgar una obra que son las que, digamos, siempre han estado allí pero pues no toda obra de arte se tiene que juzgar como sobre esos pretextos. Sería, sería aparte de aburridísimo, sería incluso muy ignorante hacerlo. Entonces, pues lo que uno trata es de saber eh, en la medida en que le sea posible eh, la persona que hizo algo, qué, qué objetivo se trazó, o sea, cuál, es, cuál fue su intención. Y con base en su intención decir, bueno... Eh, se está alejando o acercando a esa intención con todas las decisiones que tomó en esta obra. O sea, ¿por qué quiso hacer esto? ¿Por qué? Porque es que uno hay veces se olvida y en la pintura uno tiene que acordarse que de todas las cosas que uno puede pintar, uno decide pintar X. De todo, de todo lo que está ahí para nosotros. Para pintar, hemos escogido pintar tal cosa. Entonces es una, es una decisión. O sea, yo, yo no... A mí nadie me obligó a pintar algo. Nadie. En este momento nadie me está obligando a pintar a Tommy. Nadie, nadie, nadie. Yo estoy decidiendo pintarlo. Y aparte de yo decidir pintarlo, que pues lo convierte como en el sujeto de mi pintura, yo decido eh, interpretar a mi sujeto de pintura de cierta manera. Todas esas son decisiones. Entonces lo que uno quisiera es que esas decisiones uno las puede expresar como con tal magnitud que el observador que desconoce mi intención, a partir de las decisiones que yo estoy tomando, diga, ah, listo, ya entiendo los parámetros sobre los que puedo juzgar ese tipo, como esa obra en particular. Porque si no es absurdo, porque si no, entonces alguien le dice, le pueden decir a uno, no, usted necesita educarse primero, usted necesita saber qué es lo que está pasando en esa obra para decir si le gusta o no le gusta. Eso lo entiendo, pero piensen ahora cuántas personas, cuántas de las millones de personas en el mundo que van a museos y a galerías o a espacios públicos para presenciar obras de arte, cuántas de ellas, qué porcentaje es el que conoce por qué se está haciendo esa obra de arte, cuál es la intención detrás, cuál ha sido como el historial de las obras de, de los artistas que están eh, presentando ese proyecto en particular... O sea, ¿cuántas personas realmente conocen eso? Entonces uno, si uno de verdad cree que uno se tiene que instruir para disfrutar o para generar algún tipo de juicio sobre una obra de arte, pues uno ahí acaba de decirle al grandísimo porcentaje de personas que no tiene idea 
de qué es lo que realmente está viendo, que no tienen derecho a formar un juicio, que no tienen derecho. Pero entonces lo cierto, eso también es cierto para un libro, o eso también es cierto para, para música, cuando uno escucha un álbum y uno dice, ay, pero usted entiende de dónde salió eh, la decisión de tocar así, y uno dice, pues no, pero igual lo que escuché me encantó. Y las personas también pueden decir, no, pero igual lo que vi me encantó y me conmovió. Entonces uno hay veces tiene que entender que no puede ser tan presumido como decir, no, edúquese primero, porque eso es imposible, eso no va a pasar. O sea, uno no puede ir a un museo y si hay una, hay una persona enfrente de un Ellsworth Kelly y uno le va a decir, oiga, un momento, qué pena interrumpirlos. Dígame todo lo que usted sepa acerca de Ellsworth Kelly. A ver si es que usted de verdad tiene el derecho de mirar lo que yo estoy realmente mirando, porque yo sí sé acerca de él. Entonces, dígame usted si usted sabe. Y yo le voy a decir si... si y yo le voy a otorgar el derecho de que usted pueda mirar como con integridad lo que usted está observando. Mirar y evaluar con integridad lo que usted está observando. Eso es súper charro. O sea, a mí me llegan a decir eso. Yo les digo, chao, nunca vuelvo a un museo, hasta luego. Entonces, el arte es re mamón en ese sentido. Yo, yo sí creo que uno lo puede evaluar y uno puede decir, me gusta y me gusta por estas razones y no me gusta y no me gusta por estas razones. O sea, dentro de mi experiencia de vida, y no le digamos dentro de mi ignorancia, pero dentro de mi experiencia de vida, pues eso no me gusta. Y uno tiene derecho a decir, pues no me gusta. El arte también es súper harto cuando hay veces uno dice, ah, esto no me gusta. Y, hay, y viene una persona a decirle, Ay, es porque usted no entiende, es porque usted no sabe. O sea, edúquese primero y después hablamos. Es como, no, pues gracias por cerrar de... No o sea, aparte de que el arte ya es así de mamón porque es una sociedad súper eh, excluyente, chiquitica, que habla con un lenguaje que nadie entiende. Aparte de que ya somos eso, cuando alguien quiere tener una experiencia con el arte, le decimos, ay, es que usted no entiende, chao, edúquese. O sea, si yo fuera esa persona que recibe ese comentario, yo sería como, bueno, hasta luego. O sea, usted quiere, usted quiere que la sociedad sea parte del arte y me acaba de hacer sentir horrible y me acaba de dar como toda la razón cuando yo digo, ay, no voy a ir a esa exposición porque la gente re mamona y habla como rarísimo. Y si uno no sabe algo, lo hacen sentir incluso más bruto. Entonces, yo, yo creo que ese eh, no, es, no es simplemente una cuestión, cuestión de evaluar arte, también es como todo lo que está alrededor de las opiniones que se forman cuando uno trata como de generar una, una idea o, o, o decir, me siento así cuando veo una, en este caso, digamos, una pintura. Eso, es, eso hay veces tiende a ser como súper cansón. Entonces, es de las cosas difíciles que los que fuimos profes teníamos que hacer y yo, yo no disfrutaba de eso, incluso sentía que por momentos fui injusto con personas tratando de acomodar, pues, no sé, ejercicios de arte que, que uno por dentro sabía que podían entenderse como insulares, pero que uno decía, ah, pero los tengo que evaluar dentro del colectivo y el colectivo me tiene que entender por qué les voy a poner una nota. O sea, porque no es solo poner una nota. Yo mil veces puse una nota y a mí después me llegaban estudiantes y me decían, oiga, ¿y por qué yo saqué eso y ella sacó eso? ¿Cómo así? Explíqueme. Entonces, súper difícil la respuesta. Eh, Julia Tovar. Yes, who is that? Dice, yo en las entregas de arte siempre me sentía como en Project Runway. <risa> Julia. Eh, Nicolás Rodríguez dice, sí, soy el que conoce. Qué soy... bueno, Nicolás. Lo vi, Nicolás, me o sea, le pregunté por qué lo vi recientemente en un videito que puso um, Camilo, de gente ahí dibujando en, en 301. Y entonces me dio felicidad de verlo. Pues aparte que usted es difícil de no ver por... Eh... Que Nicolás es, es gigante, pero me dio mucha felicidad de verlo dibujar. Me encanta porque usted es un dibujante fantástico. Entonces, qué chévere. Nicolás estaba diciendo, Sumer, ¿se podría ahondar un poco en qué es las hace? ¿Es lo que las hace no tan buenas? Y con ese tipo de pinturas que de quizá marcas no tan conocidas, ¿qué características mirar a la hora de comprarlas? 
Nicolás, normalmente la respuesta es súper sencilla. O sea, no tenemos que ahondar tanto. Entonces pueden ser dos cosas. Puede ser la proporción de pigmento a aglutinante. O sea, pinturas que son mucho más económicas. No es solo el aceite que le meten, sino hay veces le ponen rellenos como para, para darle más cuerpo uh -huh. a las pinturas. Y entonces la proporción del pigmento que utilizan es muy, muy bajita. Muy, muy bajita. Entonces, de pronto, así sean tierras, digamos, como un amarillo ocre, eh, que son relativamente económicas porque son lo que, pues, ellas dicen, son tierras. Qué pena la alarma ahí en la calle. No, creo que no suena. Yo creo que sí, pero bueno. No. Eh, eh, y la otra, o sea, esa es una, la proporción de pigmento a el resto de cosas que le echan a las pinturas que, pues, hay veces las pinturas económicas, pues, le echan más relleno de lo que, de lo que necesitan. Y la otra es la calidad del pigmento. O sea, la otra es que el pigmento que se consiga sea un buen pigmento. Y eso también es muy cierto para las pinturas colombianas. Entonces, yo tristemente soy de los que digo que habiendo pintado con pinturas eh, Franco y Botero, son las dos uh -huh, que se consiguen, sí, no son buenas. O sea, son objetivamente malas. Y son malas por las dos cosas. Son malas porque el pigmento es muy pobre y la proporción del pigmento a lo que le echan para rendir la pintura es muy, muy baja. O sea, yo, yo creo, o sea, suena triste como decirlo así súper como, como medio frentero, pero es que no, es muy difícil generar un argumento y decir que esas pinturas son buenas. Yo prefiero decirle a una persona, mire, Pintemos con menos pinturas, pero un poquitico más costosas, porque no son tanto más costosas. O sea, le valen a usted, no sé, 8 mil, 9 mil pesos más comprar un Winton. Pintemos con ese Winton. Y de pronto usted tiene que pagar un poquito más, pero pinte con menos colores. Entonces le, se lo negocio así. Compremos menos de unas más, de unas que son económicas, digamos a grandes, en, en, a grandes rasgos son, son económicas, pero que son, siguen siendo un poquitico mejores. Eh... Estoy otra vez en la universidad, estoy eh, con exalumnos. Chévere. Pues claro, yo a todos los quiero muchísimo todavía. Eh... Nicolás, tengo todos los mejores recuerdos de Nicolás. Además es muy chévere que eh, sigan eh, como encontrando espacios donde estés tú. Tú, porque pues eso habla muy bien de sí, o donde la esté experiencia Camilo, que tuvieron. Camilo, por ejemplo. Camilo sí, también pues, es... pero hablando específicamente de ti, pues me parece bonito. Yo como una persona fuera viéndolo, parece chévere. Emilio Sorni estaba diciendo no. hace bastante tiempo, estaba ahorita revisando los comentarios y lo encontré, mm -hmm. estaba diciendo... Ah, bueno, lo estaba diciendo cuando contamos la historia de la señora con el café. O sea, ah, imagínate hace cuánto oh, tiempo. Sí, el martes. <risa> Está diciendo, un poquitín fuera de tema, pero ayer vi en YouTube un ¿Sí? reportaje de la televisión colombiana donde sale Nicolás y un proyecto de 100 rostros de artistas. <risa> sí, eso fue Andaba hace... de fanboy buscando interviews. Gracias. Eso fue hace... Bastante. A ver. Dios. Sales con el pelo súper largo. Salgo con pelo. Solo, solo decir salgo con pelo ya es eh, decir algo. Eh, no, mentiras, largo. Sí, largo. Sí, uy, no. A ver si esto dice... ¿Qué fecha? No me acuerdo. ¿2003? ¿Dos? La entrevista la subieron en 2017, pero pues no. Ah, no, ni de... No, 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 pero la expo fue hace rato. No, sí, o sea... Eh, antes de eso hay como una propaganda en el canal, un comercial... Ajá. Que dice, el auge de los vampiros en Hollywood. Claro. Sí. Hubiera sido lo máximo si fuera de óleo soya. ¿Esto cuándo será? Démoslo así, démoslo así. Ay, divino. Todo pollo. Sí. Ahí estaba más, más, mucho más joven que tú. ¿Más que yo? Sí, ahí sí. Ah, bueno, sí, no. Sí, me acordé de mi edad. Re vieja. Sí, sí, sí. No, no, te no, no. Sí, ya pero. Re vieja. Yo no quise decir nada. No estoy re vieja. Este sí. No, 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 Estás pero pues acabada. pensé. <ríe> pensé que. Eh... Sí, no. ¿Que podía ser joven todavía? No, yo decía, pero como así. 
si te ves como de 21 y después dije, ah, no, sí. Ah, sí, es que yo... Yo por ahí pasé estoy, hace yo, rato. Sí, yo ya, yo ya sí, tengo sí, sí. más. Eh, sí, te ves todo chiquito. Eh, Ariel Celeda dice, buenas chicos, Ariel. buenas chat, llegué tarde. No. no, tranquilo, lo importante es que llegó. Es llegar, y con algo. El, si llegó tarde, llegué con algo. Que, sí, tiene que contarnos algo, Ariel. Sí. ¿Con qué llegó? Eh, Nicolás Rodríguez sí. dice, sí, me había vuelto oficinista y había dejado de dibujar y pintar como dos añitos, pero me di cuenta que eso es lo mío, que eso no es lo mío. Pues eh... me alegra muchísimo saber que, que, que puede, que tiene la oportunidad de, de regresar hacia algo que hace tan bien, Nicolás. La verdad, me pone feliz eso. Eh, Ariel Celeda dice, y dejar el like. Pues sí, ¿no? Pues sí. lo menos. Sí, ¿no llega con algo? Sí, pues... pues si fuera reunión tenía que llegar como con el postre, la cervecita, algo. Pero como es acá, pues al menos el like. Cosette Paz dice, yo llegué tarde también. ¿Ese es autorretrato? No. No, Cosette, pero este pelo, Cosette, pero cuando, o sea, gracias Cosette 1986, quiere pelo. Sí. No, 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 no. Sí, de pronto Cosette nunca ha visto a Nicolás en no, los videos los, sí, lo, que lo... se llaman Visual Correspondence, que son los lunes. Cosette dice, no sé. No, pero Cosette, los eh... videos del lunes estamos en vivo hablando. sí. Eh, y eh, ahí se ve Nicolás Este es una persona que se llama Tommy Golunsky Que también es un artista Muy buen pintor Y eh, lo chistoso es que Cosette dice Sí lo he visto Me encanta, pues no sé, no sé, no sé Ahora pues no que me salí pues gritada sí. eh, Yo preguntando <risa> Ahora uno eh... no puede preguntar nada Dice, Cosette dice, soy seguidora, digo, tal vez más joven. No, ma, Cosette, Ay, Cosette el arreglando. hueco cada vez está más hondo, cada vez solita. Sí, Cosette quizá, entró quizá fue con bien, una pala. bien joven cuando tenía pelo. Sí, Cosette entró con sí, una pala. Quizá. No, y eso obviamente es molestando. Bueno, no, igual sí, Cosette no. es seguidora y yo me sí, acuerdo claro. porque a Cosette la he visto varias veces. Uh -huh. Sé que ella sabe... Que nosotros molestamos mucho. No. Dice, ja, 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 ja. Eh... Sergi Arts dice, Nico, mm, imagino señor. que te enteraste de la expo que hubo en Ay, Dios. Antwerp, ¿no? Ah, la, la de, de Wish You Were Here que hicimos en Sí, Kenio. qué lindo, que Camilo fue. Camilo estuvo allá con, Cie con Cieve. Sí, qué bonito. Sí, vi más gente ahí, qué chévere, qué chévere. Yo feliz, feliz por Camilo. Yo a Camilo también lo quiero muchísimo. Eh, y, y me encanta como que, que haya hecho semejante esfuerzo tan bonito Camilo por ir ahí a, a conocer a todas las, las personas que pues le han significado a él unas, como unas amistades reales, muy tangibles. Entonces se me hace súper bonito. Lola Onigiri dice, ja, 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 salgo con pelo y aparte largo. No sé qué pensar de la de Nicolás. A veces siento que piensa en sí mismo como si tuviera 65. No. Y otras veces me apetece Uy. que tiene 30. Dejémoslo así. Dejémoslo así. Dejemos que... Eh, dejemos que Cosette se apetezca. No, es Lola. 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 Se apetezca. Ah, no, pero es que este apetecimiento... Eh, no, dejémoslo, dejémoslo así. O sea, igual si buscan... No, mentiras. Eh, a ver, les digo. No, pero ellos ya saben. Yo tengo 44 años. Yo eh, tengo 27 años. Sí. Eh, en algún momento, ¿quién fue? ¿Ariel no fue? Alguien que cuando dijimos la edad fue como, oh my God, disculpen. <risa> sí. O sea, entró en shock. Tocó como llamarle a, a paramédicos. Lola dice, jajaja, ja, ja, me parece, digo. Lola, ya no más, por favor. Se va a meter en el Ay, mismo hueco que Cosette. Espérate que voy a... Eh, lo siento, pero... ¿Otra vez el joven? No, es que ya lo he bloqueado como tres veces, entonces ya voy a ah, poner... El... Hide from this channel. Lástima el joven. No logró, no quiso. 
Eh, no, yo dije, puso el corazón partido y ya. No va a decir nada más, pero pues ya. No, no quiso. Así no se puede, joven. Eh, Lástima, joven. Para que vea a Julia lo que le puede pasar. Sí, Julia, pilas. pilas. Al Lota y Mautier. Sí. Cuatro veces contando esta y se fue. Sí. Se y, me va. Y, y si Lola, <risa> y si ese combo de Lola Cosette empiezan a joder más con mi edad. Ah, estás molestando, pues, obviamente. Pues el mismo camino. <risa> Además, les a espera. joder, todo histérico. El mismo camino les espera, me respetan. Cosette dice: ja, 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 yo tengo 57, así que no hay preocupación. Es una alegría tener tantos años. El mismo camino. <risa> Y Lola dice, ja, 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 ja. Y Julia dice, ja, ja, acá bienvenidas en el hueco de hoy. Julia palcoso. Sí, sí, Julia. Ay, Julia. Ya me la imaginé allá en un hueco. Venga, ay, tranquilas. Sí, acá hay puesto. Sí, acá no hace tanto frío. Lola dice, hay tabla, dice Nicolás. Sí, ahí bien pues se sientan con Julia. Sí. Lo bueno es que hace buena compañía. ¿Quién? Buena charla, Julia. Mm, bueno. La verdad, si se sientan Cosette, Lola y Julia, yo me siento ahí. Mm. Yo me reiría un montón ahí. Y yo al fin puedo manejar ese chat. <risa> como siempre he querido. <risa> Julia dice, ja, 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 no puedo. Me van a empezar a decir el ingeniero, acá echando a todo el mundo. Pues vas a terminar el sin... Además, lo más chistoso es que tú dices, me siento, y yo no sé si tú sepas empezar la transmisión, tú. Yo pienso que estoy transmitiendo. Sí. Y llevas tres horas con solo sí. la pestaña de OBS abierta. Sí. Ay, Nicolás. La gente escribiéndome por Instagram. Oiga. No, nadie te escribiría porque nadie sabe que estás creyendo, que estás tratando de hablar. Lo que pasa es que después harías un post como, gracias a todos, el tema de hoy fue... Bastante profundo para mí. ¿Así esa es mi voz eh... de Instagram? Así de Julia, pelele suena. Julia dijo algo que no voy a leer porque quiero sí. que Julia vuelva a leer eso en su cabeza. Y se dé cuenta que eso no se, no se entiende tan bien, Julia, lo que acabo de decir. Perdón, no, necesito escucharlo. Dice, jajaja, ja, ja, esa Dani siempre linda está en el hueco. Bueno. Julia, por sí. Dios. Julia, habíamos Ay, dicho que de eso no se iba a hablar públicamente. Te va a ganar el time out. Sí, habíamos sí. dicho que de eso no se habla públicamente. Julia dice, ja, 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 oh no. Ay, Dios. Mm. Eh, Lola dice, ja, ja, no sé si eh, puedas empezar la transmisión, ja, ja, y luego dice que no está un poco adulto. Uy. ¿Qué fue eso? ¿No? ¿Está un poco adulto? No, y luego dice que no está un poco adulto. No, ya, no, ya terminamos por hoy. Y Jair dice, cuando leí lo de Julia, dice, time out. Y Julia, ahora sí, ya me voy, jajaja, ja, no publiquen este live, porfa. Ay, Julia. Eh, oye, tú me hiciste leer, es un voz alta. Pues, necesito conocer las, inten necesito conocer las intenciones de Julia. Eh... eh... Ya. Y necesito hacerlas públicas. Iván estaba diciendo cuando sí, estábamos hablando de las por pinturas. Por favor, Iván siempre nos aterriza, por favor. No, estaba diciendo antes. Pero. Pues bueno, utilicemos. De pronto ya se fue con los toda la conversación. comentarios de Iván para aterrizar esto. Y Lola dice: ja, 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 ¡Ay, no, lloré! ¡Ay, no! Eh, Iván estaba diciendo hace un rato. Sí. El tema de las pinturas y su calidad es bien complejo. Sí. Todo lo que me la montó Nicolás por llevarle pinturas franco a su taller no tiene nombre. Sí. Debería odiar esas pinturas, pero casi todas las usé. Ah, no, igual, yo creo que si uno ya las compró, pues ah, usé no, las. No, es de usar, si no, es y de es usar lo que, pues. Claro. O sea, Nicolás, yo creo que ha dicho mil veces que, o sea, de poder pintar, se puede pintar se con puede. cualquier cosa. Cualquier cosa. Lo que pasa es que ya si uno está diciendo que si son buenas, pues ahí también uno debe ser sincero y decir no. No bueno, son buenas. Ya, próxima semana, pinturas franco. Pero tú las usaste una vez para lo de neón. Sí. Las de neón eran franco. Sí, francamente. Francamente salieron chéveres las pinturas. Eh, eh, a mí me gustaron. Próxima semana, vamos a usar pinturas eh, franco. Sam was asking. Yes. Can you name some great painters that use the glazing technique? 
Um, Titian. Titian, 100%. Van Eyck, 100%. Uh, let's see. Um, Mie. So, Ophelia, the painting of Ophelia. Tons of glazing on that painting. Maxfield Parish. Tons of glazing on that painting. Mm, I mean, glazing, almost all of High Renaissance painting is glazing based. Almost all of it. Almost all of it. I mean, Titian, t there's no direct painting in Titian at all because the idea of painting wasn't really understood as direct painting. So the notion of painting that we have nowadays is very, very different, vastly different from the way painting was understood um, you know, prior to the 1600s. And even in the 1600s, people were still making like a very, uh, like a mix of more direct painting but with all, but also with glazing for sure. So, yeah, if you search in art history, there's, and if you want to be, I mean, if you want to be super, super technical about it and, and think of glazing as like, you know, these tons and tons and tons of transparent uh, layers, um, yeah, Titian would be the best example. The, the end result is what you see. And, and if you want to really, really take, um, you know, take in what was possible through tons of glazing layers. Look at early Titian. It's it's amazing. It's one of the most ex exquisite examples of glazing. But if you look at, um, you know, I was saying Van Eyck. If you look at even prior painting, yeah, painting before was understood not as direct painting, never ever as direct painting. That's why a lot of those uh, Renaissance paintings are so, so nice and rich and brilliant because there are a lot of, there's a lot of glazing, there's a lot of transparency. And what transparency does is just like, it lets light through and then it reaches that lighter ground that's underneath and then it bounces back and it just holds, I, I think it was, um, um, yeah. who was saying that yesterday? Callum? I think it was Callum that's saying... What? Yeah, don't worry. You're still laughing there. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, no about how, how the light. light from yeah. How yeah. How light actually comes from the lower. Right. Uh, so th there is um, there is wonderful painting that was only possible because of of glazing, but um, yeah. If, if you want, if you've never seen like a Maxfield Parish, I, I I would say that that's one of the best examples of. Um, of a oh, of a painting that is um of of what you would expect from a glazed painting, oh my God, Maxfield Parrish's work is just perfect, and it was like tons of layers. He would glaze, wait till it dries. He would sand the painting. This is what I was taught when I was um, a student, but I totally believe it. So he would just glaze, for example, like a blue sky. It was never just like blue and then he was done. It was just a lighter blue and then he would make tons and tons of glazes of, of you know, varying degrees of darker blues or like greener blues on top. And what he would do is would, he would sand um, the layer after he had glazed, after it had dried, obviously, and then he would sand it down just to make it like a little more homogenous and then he would paint over it again and then he would sand it down, glaze, sand it down, glaze. And that seems like something that's um, a little too over the top to do. But when you see his paintings, you would go, oh, my God. Like, I've never seen such luminous paintings ever. Or uh, Turner. Turner, for example, is a great example, too, uh, of, of glazed paintings. So I'm, I'm, I hope that that's enough. Jair Piñeros said... Maybe people here can, can also help us um, with other examples of glazed painting. Jair Piñeros. I'm, maybe I'm missing. Yes, I'm sorry. Jair Piñeros. Thank you. <laughs> said, also, the colors were very expensive, right? They used to save... They use it to save paint. Um, <coughs> yes. Yes, but it, it was also... Yes, I mean, they would have never considered direct painting because, yeah, it, it was far more difficult to produce a color. It was far more precious to produce a color. So, 100%, yes. Um, but it was also the way painting that like that was painting for them. The definition of painting was, again, it was fundamentally so different from anything that we do nowadays that um, that it's it's almost like hard for us to try to put ourselves in their shoes and understand 
that what how they understood glazing, for example. Mm, Liad was saying, "Don't sand your paint; it creates particles, and a lot of those are very toxic to inhale." Yes. So, so I would say you. So I would say this: you can sand your paint, but you have to be very careful about how you do it. Because I think that that's better. Because a lot of people sand down their paintings, so you can do it, but just be very careful when you do it. Because the worst thing you can do is inhale pigment. So yeah, mm. Liat is a hundred percent right in that. Um, oh, it's gonna rain. Yeah, I think it rained a little bit while we were. Yeah, but it's gonna rain in like fifteen minutes. Probably, because <clears throat> when I went out to uh, pick the call, that at... pick the call. What? Yeah, rem yeah. Contestar la llamada. Okay. Pick up the call. Pick up the phone. Pick up. Okay. The no, I love pick phone. the call. Yeah. No, you're perfect, Danny. You're so perfect. Uh, that at the end it wasn't a call. It was like a uh call center. Oh, on your phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was. It was uh raining. Oh, okay. But right now it's the sort of dark right before it rains, so. Mm, yes. But it hasn't been as cold as yesterday. No, no, today. no. It's not cold today. Yesterday I was like freezing. Yeah, but you were also we were... kind of sick yesterday. Yeah. A little under the weather, let's say. Not sick, but little, yeah. little under the weather. Yeah. Mm. And when we started today, I was also a little under the weather um and when i laughed yeah because of when i laugh yeah yeah it's the best medicine though yeah well mm. laughter always yeah always. for the soul but not for the throat for a cold also <laughs> um let's see sergi art said lmao I don't know if Serge, mm. Sergi, Serge Arts, what did I say? Sergi dice LMAO, no sé si lo dice por los chistes de Julia, mm. que es... No eh, le patrocinen sí. nada, no, no le alcahueten, como decimos acá. <risa> no más, por favor. Eh, a ver, ¿qué dice por acá? Quiero revisar que no se me olvide ningún comentario, como siempre. Si se te pasan los de Julia, no pasa nada. Eh, so when we were talking about movies, when Julia mm. was asking about movies, mm, and I, I said that. I liked them in Spanish, okay. Panacotic said Disney is pretty good for localizing their movies and having the other languages be the full experience. Yes, I think their translations are pretty good. It's not like sometimes when the translation makes like bad jokes because they don't know how to translate them. Yeah, I think find they're a way. pretty good. They, they find a way to make like to make up a joke. And I think that they also try to um, accommodate the voices too. Yeah. So they really do a casting to see what voice really fits uh, to the translation of that character. So I like it. Yeah, we both do. Not not Julia, though. Because eh, she doesn't like Colombian accents. Yeah. Eh, Panacotic said, When I was in France, people would all sing the French song. In Spanish-speaking countries, people sing the Spanish song. Mm -hmm. I think that's a testament to how good they do their localization. Yeah. That the songs are iconic in every language. Yes, yes. And they also picked uh people that can sing in different languages which is very important yeah the uh moana songs they're really good in spanish yeah no but in english well i know you like the one in english yeah because we saw the, the movie uh, in english well, I, well I you slept, slept it, yeah. the movie yeah i, am so, I, I feel the movie. so bad we it, have to rewatch it because i i liked it no, i don't think i've tired. ever seen it like uh no i liked it Start to finish. No, you were tired. Yeah, but I know Fer loves the uh, the, the rock song. Mm -hmm. No, they're very good. Yeah, but she likes it in Spanish. She sings it in Spanish, so. 
Jair Piñeros dice, doesn't like Colombian accents? Chao, Julia. Mm. And she's Colombian. Mm, I, <clears throat> I mean, I'm just going to well, say that. Well, whatever that means. Maybe her. she auto-timed uh, out herself. Yeah. As she was saying. <laughs> Julia, where are you? Mm. She's probably searching for her roots. What a shame. Mm, so let's see if maybe there's another comment that I missed. Mm. I'm almost done though. Mm -hmm. I thought, I honestly thought I wasn't going to do, a, um, I was going to do a bit more classical uh, version of Tommy and not so kind of scrappy, uh, which is the way I usually paint. But I don't know, there's there's something kind of scruffy and, and just really, gnarly but awesome about uh this this particular uh painting that i really really like so mm, almost i want to keep that i mean that's sort of par for course for me but but i want to see if i can keep that mm, julia dice what she's back creo que con tal de que no hable de temas de televisión o series o películas estamos bien y ya no me banean mm, o países <laughs> O su país natal, de pronto. Eh, Nuestra patria, de pronto. Jair tan dice, necesitada. Jair dice, Julia, por favor, entregar su cédula. Sí. Y Lola dice, Julia tiene miedo. Y Julia dice, Jair, jajaja, ja, ja, solo en encanto, perdón, lo intenté. Eh, Julián Cabrera was saying, several of Encanto characters, voices, were recorded by the same Colombian actors and actresses. In Spanish and English. But as Colombian, of course, it's a must to watch the movie in Spanish. I know. We, we certainly had that. Um, we, th we thought the same as you do. Uh, and, and we wanted to support our local talent. Proud of it. Proud of our language. Well, I mean, what, they, what they're saying is true. Because the people who did the voice in Spanish also did it in English. So... I mean, I'm protecting Julia, but she's still okay. Uh, that's treason. Supporting. I feel. So choose your words wisely. She's still supporting the Colombian artists. Okay. But mm -hmm. once I uh, no, con haber dicho eso. Uh -huh. Once I say no, with that con, said. Con a bear. With that said, <laughs> uh, you have to see Encanto in Spanish. I mean, if there is one movie. If you're a Colombian and there's one movie that you need to see in Spanish, is Encanto. So, Ignacio... Well, not her, apparently. <laughs> not her. Ignacio Casas mm -hmm. dice, Por las temáticas de su obra, no necesita de la profundidad en el espacio ni mucha perspectiva. Pero incluso cuando dibujó desde la imaginación... Pero incluso cuando dibujó... Perdón, es que me perdí sin la tilde. Pero incluso cuando dibujó desde la imaginación, siguió en un primer plano. ¿No le interesa el espacio? Uf. Eso, eso, eso tiene un tono a regañadiente un poco. Pero yo eh, diría que... Pues perdón, yo digo algo, pero... Sí, no, yo diría que... No sé qué quiere decir. Primero, no sé si compartimos la misma definición de espacio. Sí. No sé si el espacio... La eh, ¿Quién es la persona? Disculpa. Ignacio Casas. Ignacio. No, Ignacio. Yo, yo he visto que Ignacio muchas veces no. Sí, viene mucho. Viene, viene. Viene mucho. Se conecta. Almuerza mucho Varias aquí. Veces. Almuerza mucho y nunca se ha quejado del desayuno. Eh, no, Ignacio, tendríamos como que para, para estar hablando como el mismo lenguaje, para estar como coincidiendo, tendríamos primero que tender, tener un entendimiento a qué se refiere con espacio. Porque pues... Yo no sé si espacio para usted es como una obra eh, eh, súper eh, eh, renacentista donde se, se vislumbra el horizonte y hay muchísimas eh, líneas que apuntan a él. Entonces hay fuga, 
y, y hay como una profundidad eh, amplísima entre las cosas que puedan estar en primer plano, en el plano del medio y en el plano del fondo. Pero esa eh, es solo una de muchas pues, definiciones de espacio. Pues no, o sea, se lo pongo así, eh, Ignacio. <coughs> si, yo, si yo hablara de mi verdad, pongámoslo así de una manera súper, súper sencilla. Si yo hablara de mi verdad, si yo quiero hablar de mi pintura, y yo vivo en un apartamento muy pequeñito, pero entiendo que mi apartamento es mi universo, y voy a pintar mi apartamento porque quiero, porque quiero. O sea, a mí nadie me podría convencer que, que para pintar algo, que, que una buena pintura no puede surgir de un espacio pequeño, digamos, no puede. Me tendrían que decir, no, usted tiene que ir afuera o tiene que estar en un espacio más amplio. Usted no puede estar simplemente pintando la esquina de su mundo. No, en ese momento yo diría, no, como así? Uno 100% puede pintar la esquina de su mundo. Entonces, si uno está pintando una, un espacio pequeño o si uno quiere hablar de lo pequeño, pues, ¿qué quiere decir eso? O sea, la definición de espacio ahí, ¿cuál es? ¿Termina siendo la misma? ¿Termina abriendo primer plano, segundo plano...? Eh, y, y el plano del fondo. Entonces, yo diría que esa... O sea, y yo, y yo creo que le creo entender, aquí lo estaba molestando al principio, como diciendo que sí, la pregunta era de una vez regañándome, pero... No, y ahí, espérate, Ignacio está diciendo, son 200 caracteres, lo que uno puede escribir. <risa> Dice, son 200 caracteres, no era mi intención de que suene mal, perdón. No, ¿cómo se le ocurre? No, no, por eso, yo, por eso comencé molestando. Yo tampoco quiero sonar como si estuviera yo... No, siendo... y además Ignacio viene mucho, uno sí. ya sabe que el tono de Ignacio no es... Siendo... Y tampoco quiero yo sonar como defensivo, porque pues también uno está abierto a cualquier cuestionamiento o a cualquier crítica, independientemente de, de, de si yo pueda estar de acuerdo o no, eso no, no pasa nada. Lo único que, que sí diría que es que pues espacio quiere decir tantas cosas, tantísimas cosas... Que de pronto la definición que yo tengo de espacio es una definición muchísimo más reducida. Pero entonces si usted me dice, no, oiga, pero no le interesa, pues yo le diría, no, pues fíjese que ahorita que estuvimos en Menorca, hubo, tuvimos la oportunidad de pintar plein air y pinté a las personas pintando afuera y después pinté como una panorámica de la casa donde nos estábamos quedando. Y entonces uno podría decir, ah, bueno, al fin hay espacio. Y le diría yo con toda honestidad, eh, Ignacio... Pues Dani vio las pinturas y todas las personas que estuvieron en, en, en el taller vieron las pinturas, pero para mí era ver otra pintura mía, cualquiera que fuera, otra pintura mía. Y cuando hemos estado de viaje que pinté como unos callejones y pinté un, eh, eh, una entrada, pinté la entrada de donde me estaba quedando cuando hice un taller en Montespertoli en, en Italia, pues son espacios, pero son, o sea, yo... No sé, si quiero pintar ese espacio, pues trato de pintar ese espacio lo mejor que pueda. Pero, pero de resto, no sé, no sé. Yo, yo siempre veo como, no sé, como cada pintura es un universo aparte y, y a cada, cada pintura merece su, como su propio entendimiento y su propia, como intento de definir lo que quiere decir eso, atmósfera, espacios. Seguramente yo... yo mmm, yo asocio más como la idea de aire a la idea de espacio. Entonces lo entiendo muchísimo más atmosférico. Pero pues también es que me sueno charro. Suena charro si empiezo a decir, pero no Ignacio, pero yo he pintado pinturas con resto de espacio también. No, o sea, de pronto yo creo que también es que, o sea, tú puedes pintarlo como tú lo pintas, pero de pronto tú dices, yo estoy hablando de espacio... Y puede que otra persona diga, no, pero en lo que yo entiendo de espacio hmm. o en lo que en mi cabeza es pintar espacio, no siento que esté pintando. Y eso, pues, ahí sí no hay nada que hacer. Eh, pues porque igual yo creo que es como la percepción que la gente tiene o como esa definición que le dan al pintar espacio. Pero por eso yo decía que yo siento que tú sí eh, pintas espacio y eres muy consciente del espacio. Y no solo del espacio, sino también como de la atmósfera de... O sea, como la atmósfera que rodea ese espacio, como qué tinte tiene, qué carácter tiene ese espacio del que estás hablando. Sí, que soy Antonio López cuando, sí, o sea, que soy Antonio López, no, no, por Dios, no. O sea, no en mil, o sea, en mil cosas no soy López, o sea, no, no, no soy ese tipo de pintor, no soy. No, pero, Incluso... o sea, igual tú tienes, porque, o sea, si es hablando como de perspectiva y como de... 
como Ignacio estaba diciendo, eh, ni mucha perspectiva. Eh, si uno ve las pinturas que tú hiciste incluso en Our Painted Lives, digamos la de la sala de la casa de tu mamá, o todas esas pinturas son pinturas de espacio sí. que hablan del espacio. Interiores, o sea, de, entonces seguramente tam, no sé cuánto eh, mm. podrían satisfacer como esa definición de, de, de espacio que, que de pronto está buscando Ignacio. Pero por, hagámoslo súper fácil, Ignacio, como para usted, o sea, cuando usted se refiere a pinturas así, nómbreme como unas pinturas que para usted sean como... Eh, bueno, yo, yo dije López, que López se me hace que es como súper fácil. O sea, eh, eh, para mí, cuando es como cuando se pinta un espacio urbano, pues, pues sí. O sea, uno va a hablar de la calle que tengo enfrente y hacia dónde se dirige esa calle y de pronto dónde esté a mi horizonte y todo lo que hay de aquí hacia ese horizonte. Pero de pronto, eh, cuénteme como cuáles son esas ideas, esas nociones de espacio como que, que usted tiene y pues podemos hablar desde, desde ellas también, que es, que es como más fácil hacer ese ejercicio así. Para que estemos hablando, y por eso lo decía, para que estemos hablando como desde el mismo sitio. Porque mmm, yo también le podría mostrar resto de pintura que no necesariamente tiene un horizonte, no tiene fugas, no tiene, no tiene como una, no sé, una cajita en perspectiva eh, o un volumen en perspectiva como para decir que que se está recorriendo el espacio hacia atrás eh, y que para mí tiene una, una um, um, digamos que la noción de espacio que existe en esas pinturas para mí es tan palpable como aquella que me está mostrando kilómetros hacia el, el, eh, la línea de horizonte, hacia el horizonte. Entonces, sí, de, de pronto es que pues, son cosas distintas. Y no toda pintura tiene, acordémonos, no toda pintura tiene que satisfacer esas, ese tipo de cosas. O sea, uno puede decir, para a mí, por ejemplo, me fascina, me fascina, eh, por si lo quiere buscar, y se me hace un pintorzazo, me fascina Pete the Street. Mm. Es, un, es un monstruo, es un monstruo. Sí. Para mí es el mejor pintor plener que hay hoy en día. O sea, y Nicolás dice Pit the Street por si lo busca en, en Instagram. Sí, 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 qué pena. Sí, le, sí, les sí. digo así por si lo quieren, quieren buscar el usuario en, en Instagram. Pero él es un monstruo. Sí. Un, es un monstruo. Y hay veces yo, o sea, me ha pasado, o sea, no por Ignacio en este momento, pero me ha pasado personas que dicen, oiga, ¿y usted por qué no hace eso? Y uno, oiga, ¿usted no puede hacer eso? Y uno dice, pues no, obvio no. O sea, no. Eso es jodidísimo. Y entonces es como, ay, pero yo pensé que usted era bueno pintando. Y es como, no, pues yo, yo puedo pintar esto. Pero es que hay gente que es fantástica y hay gente que es fantástica pintando eso. Esa otra cosa. Es como, seguramente la, la devoción que yo tengo con el ser humano, eh, otras personas la tienen con los espacios. Y le fascina pintar espacios habitados y les encanta. Y para mí él es, él es un monstruo, es un genio, así un genio absoluto. Pero vamos a ser súper sinceros, o sea, es, es muy jodido que en la pintura uno diga que hay pintores que son buenos haciendo absolutamente todo, todo lo que tocan, todo, todos los sujetos de pintura, no importa qué variable sea, todo lo hacen bien. Hay gente que todo lo hace bien. Eso no se los niego. De nuevo, ¿quiénes son esas personas? Pen personas excepcionales. O sea, y como su nombre lo indica, la naturaleza de esas personas es ser poca. O sea, son pocas entre todos nosotros que pintamos. Ellos son súper, súper distintos. Entonces, yo no, yo, yo no soy de esas personas distintas. Yo nunca me he entendido como persona, una persona distinta. Yo reconozco muchísimo las cosas que me atraen, que me gustan, que me interesan y trato, trato en la medida en que me sea posible también de, de exigirme, pero exigirme hasta donde, hasta donde como que puedo, hasta donde, porque hay cosas que me cuestan muchísimo trabajo también. Entonces yo también soy súper consciente de cuando algo me queda muy grande. Muy, Ignacio muy grande. dice... Solo me refería a un horizonte, objetos en un primer plano, otros en un segundo y así. Exacto. Sí, sí, pre, eh, eh, pensándolo como en, en, en lo que estaba diciendo ahora como, 
como en López. Un López es, es perfecto o, un, o Pete the Street es perfecto. Es perfecto para eso. Pero yo creo que de pronto también si uno ve eh, tus pinturas de... O sea, donde se ve un retrato como de un busto. Sí. No... Como que no describes mucho el espacio si lo que quieres es hablar del retrato. Pero tienes muchas otras pinturas. Digamos, la que hiciste, eh, la mía en el tocador. Sí, sí. Recibo. Claramente se entienden los planos, pero porque la intención es hablar del sí, espacio. Sí, sí. Y, y, y creo que tuvimos una semanita cuando... Eh, eh, de pronto lo invitamos a ver esa de nuevo, son, son como definiciones más cortas de espacio entonces también es como el, el, el juego de tratar de interpretar qué quiere decir eso eh, pero hicimos una semanita donde decíamos espacio antes que la figura, ¿te acuerdas? Como, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah, pues espera a mí lo busco Sí, pero son, son cosas así interesantes pero eh, no, de, de pronto yo, yo creería, yo no recuerdo, no recuerdo Ignacio y, y pues hasta usted me puede ayudar, pero las semanas donde he hecho... Se llama Prioritizing Space. Sí, priorizando el espacio. Eh, pero hay semanas donde yo he hecho pues pinturas que son en el exterior, o sea, exteriores, llamémoslas así más bien, o algunas en interiores, que seguramente durante el tiempo que las estoy pintando, o sea, por eso le, le digo es que, fue pucha, es que, es que hemos hecho muchas, pero... Pero estoy seguro que en el tiempo en el que las estoy pintando estaba hablando de, de espacio. espacio. Uh -huh. de, estoy hablando de atmósfera y espacio. Y, y tengo que, si hay una semana donde solo, es, solo era ese tema, le aseguro que estamos hablando de eso. Pero yo, por ejemplo, le decía, o sea, con, tan, con todo lo que a mí, admiro a, a Pete the Street, que se me hace, um, un, de nuevo, eh, la, la persona que mejor hace este ejercicio de pintar plenero hoy en día. Eh, eh, yo, yo, por ejemplo, considero que de las pinturas que más me gustan eh, en cuanto a, digamos, paisajes urbanos, y obviamente la definición pues, no, no es una misma porque paisaje urbano, paisaje, paisaje urbano hace un siglo pues, es distintísimo a, al paisaje hoy en día, pero a mí de los paisajes urbanos que más, más me gustan eh, son las, las casas de Chile, de Egon Chile, uh -huh. Egon Chile. Se me hace una locura lo que él hacía con el paisaje. Así, o sea, soy... Me, me estremece en el mejor sentido lo, lo, que, lo que él hacía cuando pintaba por fuera. Y... O, o no sé si pintaba por fuera, de pronto dibujaba y lo traía al taller y pintaba adentro. Sí, o hacía una anotación y después la traía al taller y los pintaba adentro. Eh, y esas pinturas, el espacio es totalmente acoplado. Totalmente. O sea... Es una, es una sola capa, no, sí, hay un fondo, ya, o sea, hay cosas que asociamos con ideas de fondo, cosas que asociamos con ideas de cielo, pero no eran, o sea, no eran acerca de profundidad, es como más o menos eh, la diferencia que existe entre la noción de perspectiva occidental y pensar en cómo entendía eh, la perspectiva y la profundidad eh, el, el arte oriental, por ejemplo, los... los eh, eh, en, los, en los grabados en madera japoneses. Era una noción distintísima. O en los o lo mismo, en los, eh, en los dibu en el ukiyo-e o en los dibujos eh, chinos. Distintísima la noción que hay de espacio. Súper distinta, súper, súper distinta. Pero entonces, eh, esa noción de Chile que es plana, es totalmente plana, que solo, o sea, sacrifica la profundidad en pro de ritmo, como pa, pa. Puras formas, geometría, ritmo. O sea, todo es, es una pintura de, de casitas de Chile, es solo ritmo. Parecen como, como teclas de un piano. Hay un sacrificio ahí. Y entonces el sacrificio es súper evidente. Yo de pronto quisiera, y no sé si se comunica tanto, que mi sacrificio fuera aire. O sea, mi sacrificio es todas esas, todas esas diagonales, todas esas como aristas que existirían y que apuntarían como a, hacia hacia eh, una, un entendimiento como más geométrico, más matemático de un espacio. Yo todas las sacrifico po, como por aire, como porque uno, al, si uno ve una pintura, uno siente casi que uno está tragando una bocanada de aire y uno se vuelve más pesado cuando se traga ese aire. 
Eso lo entiendo porque para mí el aire es, es espacio. Para mí, para mí el, el espacio entre mi mano y la pintura está repleto de aire. Y para mí ese espacio es poderosísimo. O sea, nada. Que son 10, 8 centímetros que pongo en mi mano y la pintura. Para mí ese espacio es como el universo entero. Entonces, a mí de pronto no me significa tanto que me digan, oiga, pero ¿por qué usted no me, no me pinta todo lo que hay de allí, desde acá hasta allá? Lejísimos. O sea, como que la virtud del espacio se amplifica solo por ser más lejos, solo por llegar hasta ese horizonte. Eh, yo no sé cuál es la distancia al horizonte. Si fuera uno plano, Uy. yo no sé cuál es el ángulo de la Tierra como para calcular. Como si sí, fuera una, uno plano. O sea, no, si el espacio es totalmente plano, ¿cuánto es el espacio del punto que, de uno que sería un punto fijo hacia el horizonte en la Tierra? Eso tiene que ver con el grado de inclinación de la Tierra, supongo. O, o sea, uh -huh. la esfera, el tipo de esfera que es la, el tipo de volumen que es la Tierra. Pero desde un punto fijo hacia el horizonte, ¿cuánto espacio hay? Yo no eh... sé. Ese punto lejano, el horizonte, puede sí. situarse de 5 a 100 kilómetros de distancia dependiendo de nuestra posición. Bueno, 100 kilómetros, digamos. Pues, tomemos el más grande. Pues que eso estuvo bastante... Por ¿Acá hay decía, una fórmula? En el... Sí, porque eso es pura geometría, estoy seguro. Sí. Eh, espera. Pero, pero Uy, digamos 100 kilómetros. Esta, digamos. mira. Sí, eso es. Digamos 100 kilómetros, por utilizar 100 kilómetros. Que se me hace una barbaridad 100 kilómetros, pero bueno. Eh... Pero, pero, o sea, espacio solo es, o, o la noción de espacio es más espacio si logro hablar de 100 kilómetros. ¡Wow! ¡Uf! Ese se me haría una, una locura, ¿no? Eso es, eso es como grandísimo. O, por ejemplo, Rembrandt. O sea, pongamos, porque comenzamos hablando de Rembrandt, pues terminemos hablando de Rembrandt. Y yo sé que Rembrandt normalmente la gente lo asocia como con un retratista, pero pues, pues no, para mí es un pintor. O sea, es un pintor eh, eh, que la obra incluso eh, eh, sería, sería, un, eh, sería una ofensa incluso para la obra que uno la, la encasillara simplemente en retrato. Pero Rembrandt también hizo muchísimas pinturas de interiores, muchísimas, muchísimas pinturas en interiores, Hizo algunas, no tantas, pinturas de paisajes. ¿E hizo? Sí, e hizo, perdón. Muchísimas pinturas de, de esos típicos paisajes así holandeses que son súper chéveres con casita y carreta eh, o medio molino o súper, súper lindos con unos cielos grando, grandísimos así a lo Van Roystel que era como el, el pintor así eh, holandés como, como más grande que hacía paisaje. Entonces, pero, pero yo, o sea... Yo no hubiera podido decir, ah, yo hubiera querido que Rembrandt fuera Canaleto. Porque es que Canaleto es un bárbaro y hacía unos, unos espacios fantásticos y hacía Venecia preciosa y hay resto de perspectiva en, en, en Canaleto y hay, o sea, punto de fuga, todos esos edificios en fuga, todo, todo, oh, no edificios, pues todas esas construcciones, edificaciones en fuga, todas esas columnas en fuga, de esos canales en fuga, toda esa plaza de San Marcos preciosa en fuga. O sea, todo lindísimo. Pero ¿y a mí qué me importa? Qué pena, de nuevo si sueno defensivo. Pero ¿a mí qué me importa que Rembrandt no sea canaleto? O sea, yo en mi cabeza pienso, pues Rembrandt no es canaleto porque existe canaleto. Ya, porque si yo quiero eso, pues voy a canaleto. Y si yo quiero lo otro, pues voy a Rembrandt. Así como yo no le puedo decir a Canaleto que era pésimo retratista. Es como, pues, no, a ver, una cosa es una cosa. Entonces, sí, yo creo que mi entendimiento es, es de pronto un entendimiento más pequeñito, mucho más pequeñito. Pero ojalá que se entienda que es por decisión que es más pequeñito. Ignacio dice, ahora que lo menciona, me hizo caer en cuenta de que el espacio puede ser atmósfera y sí es evidente en su pintura, no lo había considerado así. No, 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 chévere, chévere. Y obviamente hay, hay personas que hacen como unos interiores. Por ejemplo, a mí me entusiasma mil veces, un millón de veces, Ignacio, más la idea de hacer un interior, de poder describir un interior de un espacio. O sea, un cuarto, una sala, eh, una alcoba, lo que sea. A mí eso, ¡guau! Me encanta, se me hace fantástico. Usted me muestra una calle y me muestra el horizonte y me da diarrea. O sea, a mí no me... Nicolás. Sí, qué pena. 
Pero no, no, no me mueve nada. O sea, y, y siempre trato como de decir, bueno, no, pero como pintor tengo que ser capaz de, de pararme ahí y hacer algo. Algo con eso porque pues uno de pintor tiene que retarse. Pero también hay veces digo, no, pero no está mal que a mí no me conmueva porque lo que me conmueve es ver cuando una persona eh, eh, como Pete hace eso y es un... Y, y, o sea, me da una lección de las posibilidades que hay cuando uno de verdad está conmovido por eso. Cuando uno de verdad, de verdad le remueve el, inte le, el intestino eh, ver esa calle y dice, oh, yo quiero pintar esta calle, estoy que me pinto esa calle llena de gente y carros y todo y reflejos y lámparas y yo veo esa cosa y en serio me da mareo, me da mareo, pero pues existe una persona en este planeta que es fantástica haciendo eso que le pues, muestra a uno. Y existe mucha gente a la Así que ella. le llama, porque sí, pues no es aparte, como... aparte, aparte, lo estoy usando a él como digamos el, eh, como si fuera el paradigma de, de, de todas aquellas personas que son increíbles haciendo eso. Entonces yo creo que, o, o James, James Gurney, es fantástico haciendo eso, fantástico, fantástico. Y James, por ejemplo, es un pintor que es completísimo, completísimo. Eh, yo de pronto pues no soy tan completo. O sea, la realidad, la realidad es esa. La respuesta súper fácil es esa, que, que dentro de todas las cosas que uno puede hacer, pues yo de pronto no puedo hacer tantas. O sea, puedo tratar de hacerlas, pero no las voy a hacer tan bien como aquellas personas que son excepcionalmente buenas haciéndolo. Y Julia. entonces... No, no, no. Y entonces me, me, me... No quiero decir me limito, pero me siento súper cómodo tratando de entender todas las posibilidades que me sugiere el trabajar dentro de los espacios que, que siento que, con los que sí conecto. Julia... Es, Decía, sí, los espacios de Chile y los bosques de Klimt también oh, se me precioso, hacen preciosos, sí. Precioso, sí. Y creo que también va muy de la mano lo que tú decías de sacrificar por el ritmo. Sí. Porque en los de Klimt también, sí, también es como es un pa, ritmo pa, 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 impresionante, sí. Sí, increíble. Es que el, ah, el diseño en esa época era, era súper primordial también. Lucas Filapi, o oh, mm. maybe to, to, to wrap end. up. What's that? Yes, to please. wrap up. Yes. Yeah. Lucas Filapi was saying, as Brazilian, I feel the Brazil. way you, I feel the way you guys talk is easier to understand than Argentina's Argentina's oh. Spanish. Oh yeah. I'm curious if you feel the difference to other Latin countries. Oh uh, yes, hundred percent. Every every single Spanish speaking country has super different. Has accents. a very 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 different accent. Well, I think maybe that happens too to people in Brazil with uh. Portuguese from Portugal. Yeah, so think about that. It's exactly the same. Yeah. But multiply it. But because you're only... Well, are they the only two countries that speak uh, Portuguese? No. I think, yeah, maybe. No, no. Yeah. No, I don't know why I, I feel that maybe... Where, in I've Guyanas? Heard, no, no. In, yeah, in Africa, they... In some places. Mm, Portuguese? Um, as the first language, let's yeah, say. First language. As a first language. Portuguese is now the official language of several independent countries and regions. Okay. Angola, Brazil, uh, Capo Verde, East Timor, okay, wow. Guinea Bissau, Macau, go. Mozambique, Portugal, and Sao Tome and Príncipe. Okay, so that's a lot of like colonies, uh, like uh, Portuguese colonies. But um, yeah, so it's. Probably the same as if I told you, do you guys all speak, does it sound similar? And you would say, oh, no, like we can tell where you're from by your accent. Yeah, for us, it's that evident. Like it is so, so different that we can tell people that like Spanish in Central America is very different than Spanish in in all of South America. And within South America, every single country Every single country, it's like a, it's like a different song. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very different song. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, there we go. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Yes, thank you. We had a very cool yeah, session. Yeah, as always, as always. I laughed a lot. Yes. So, uh, thank you, guys, for always being here, and we'll see you on Monday. Yes, with, with the uh, visual, visual correspondence. correspondence. So, yeah. a little bit of space in that one, just to give you guys. Um, <laughs> There is a tiny hint of space mm. in that painting. So you're giving me clues. A too. very, a very uh, primitive um, depiction of space, I would say. So it feels like a backdrop. 
but I, you know, but I, I wanted to to put my figure uh, within that context. No, so, but now you're telling me a lot. I don't want to know, I know that much. So we'll see I you can on show Monday. The painting if you no, want. I'll okay. see you on Monday yes. to uh, reveal, reveal the painting yeah. that Nicolas did mm. and to have a conversation around that. So yeah, uh, we'll be happy if you could join us. Maybe if Remember, the painting will will. Um, Let us gain some perspective. Mm. Um, remember, mm. if you want to uh, never miss the streams, yeah, uh, click the notification bell. Yes, I forgot the name of the bell. No, see, it was, yeah, no, of they, course, now bell. I remember, but that's why I paused before. Oh yeah. So ring the notific notification <laughs> bell <laughs> in order bell. to yeah. be there to be for bell. our videos. And yeah. uh, have a good uh, weekend. Yes. We'll see you guys. Bye, everyone.